Arcade Runner podcast number 134. We are just four days away from seeing the rise of Skywalker. And so we are going to spend this episode talking about our final kind of hopes and predictions um, for that movie and just talk about, you know, the rise of Skywalker one last time before um, it becomes a reality. So uh, my name is John and joining me for the show this morning, as always, is Ryan. Good morning. Yeah, so um, I'm feeling pretty excited right now, Ryan, four days away from the rise of Skywalker. Mm -hmm. Um, Just really want to want those four days to pass by uh, quickly and smoothly so I can get to that movie um, and uh, yeah feeling pretty hyped but before we jump into Rise of Skywalker you want to talk a little Mando chapter six I think right Mando chapter six. yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and we'll just kind of do like a, a quick quick overview of this one I actually have not had a chance to watch it a second time so Same. we won't be doing our usual deep dive um especially because the focus is rise of skywalker this week but um if you listen to our episode with uh force material which you should um you know i think you could kind of tell that we were a little bit uh down on the last episode uh episode five um didn't didn't love uh, that episode. Um, so I think I kind of rolled into this episode, um, I don't know, cautiously optimistic, I guess. Um, but, uh, it turned out to be super awesome. Um, I actually really loved this episode. I thought it was kind of a, kind of a lame plot. Um, in general, like, it was, you know, basically just, uh, putting together a crew, um, it was, you know, like, a, a poor man, poor man solo, which was already kind of a poor man's something else, um, and so, uh, I didn't, like, the, the plot was kind of whatever, um, but I think the way, um, everything was put together and the performances from, uh, the actors in this episode, which were all, like, very clear (laughs) archetypes that, you know, you'd, like, very, very clear archetypes, like, you'd get in, like, an episode of Resistance or something. Um, these weren't, like, the most complicated and thoughtful, uh, characters on the show um but I think the performances were amazing and the direction was just so good that it kept it um tense and immersive and um yeah I ended up just uh really liking the episode I don't really feel like it moved the story that much further like <laughs> It kind of just inched along the story, um, but like the overall story, I guess. But it still was like really enjoyable to watch, and um, again, I was really into it um, while I was watching. Yeah, I was pretty into this one too, um, for sure. I I thought uh, it was very well done and uh, very tense. You know, like the, I was, I thought it was like really tense and. Um, it almost, uh, had like, you know, kind of horror vibes to it as well, you know, not just mm-hmm. like the, I mean, yeah, it had the whole like, hey, let's put together a crew and, and go get this bounty or whatever, or free this prisoner. But, um, once they were on that ship, it was like a little bit of a, uh, escape room, you know, uh, mm. kind of, I, I just, there was like a, a darkness to it you know what i mean where like these people are so kind of cynical and so um nihilistic almost you know that it was mm-hmm. just like oof man i'm this is making me uncomfortable and kind of creeping me out and then you know uh it wasn't too spooky when you know the lights were off and it was it was like well, the mando's popping up behind people where you know <laughs> but 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 it but it was kind of using the language of horror movies a little bit uh in, in certain parts like that, you know, like, again, not, not to, to make you really scared or anything, but I thought it was cool how it was bringing in some of those elements. And, um, 
I thought, yeah, I thought it was a pretty smart episode. I thought the uh, performances, uh, as you said, I think uh, were definitely an improvement from, um, you know, last week's episode for the most part. And, uh, and you know, there's a couple clunky things, McClunky things, but, mm. uh, you know, overall, uh, yeah, I thought it was really cool. Um, good, good, good episode for sure. Um, the uh, cameo at the end. <clears throat> Oh, I didn't really, I didn't really love the cameo at the end because um, I think that moment. Hopefully, when I go back and watch it again, it, it won't bother me as much now that I know it's coming. But um, that so took me out of the moment, mm-hmm. and the more I think about it, that moment should have been so cool, you know, because you're seeing the New yep. Republic for the first time, you're seeing X-wing pilots for the first time, mm-hmm. and instead, it's like, hey, there's Dave Filoni of everything Star Wars fame, mm-hmm. you know, the guy that's been a talking head in every single Star Wars promotional video for like ten years straight, the one that's mm-hmm everywhere at star wars celebration the one that you um know and are so familiar with you know like i don't know him but i'm Mm -hmm. you're so familiar with from all this uh, all all this uh footage and all these behind the scenes things and and whatever um and it's just like man that so took me out of it you know Mm -hmm. Um, so i mean i like dave filoni i'm happy for him that he got a cool cameo spot or whatever but that being said it's just like (sighs) That is a uh, not really contributing much to the episode for me. Yeah, I think I'm sure there's a lot of people that are like, oh, my God, I love Dave Filoni. He's my favorite. He should rule Star Wars forever. He's the king of Star Wars. I love him so much. Like anything they do with it makes me so happy. Like there he is on screen. I love it. Did you see him? That's Dave. Remember him? Wow. From everything. Yeah. And, and I'm sure that yeah. like there's probably a, a segment of the audience that's so thrilled with that um, cameo. But for me, it's just like. Well, now I'm I'm just reminded I'm watching fictional TV because it's it, you might as well like spin the camera around and show me the the crew working on the TV show <laughs> when you when you have him in that X wing seat like that you know that's how I feel about it so. yeah yeah I think um, I mean I'm all for Dave Filoni getting uh, a cameo in live action Star Wars especially when he's executive producing cool whatever um, he should have been someone who was like in makeup or like fully helmeted or something like because i mean even like with john favreau like you're like oh that's john favreau's voice but like that was less egregious to me but if it was just like hey here's straight up john favreau face i'd be like hey that's john favreau in the same way i was like hey that's dave filoni (laughs) Right, even even Rick McCollum just put himself in a goofy like floppy hat and stood behind the principal actors as they spoke, you know, in the Phantom Menace. He didn't like give himself lines. Um, yeah, it's just it's just too distracting. Yep, and almost nobody would have known who Rick McCollum was at that time, you know, watching it. And he, you know, I don't know, whatever. It's it also is a TV show, and it's a little lighter and goofier fare, I guess, at, at sometimes. So it is what it is. But. I, I, I really liked it, um, the yeah. episode overall, and uh, it, it, but it is really, um, it, it's so clear now that the show is kind of like two shows, you know? Mm-hmm. It's going to be bookended by this, like, act- um, this kind of main uh, plot about, you know, um, Grief Karga and, you know, the... the 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 guild and in Werner Herzog and whatever Giancarlo Esposito's character is going to be mm-hmm. Moff Gideon like that stuff is all going to be you know first three episodes and probably I hope last two episodes mm-hmm. um, and then the rest of the show or the rest of the season is just sort of like the Mando's you know kind of mission or adventure of the week type thing um, and that is fine I'm I'm fine with that now that it's it's clear that that's what they're doing. Um, it's maybe not my favorite approach or whatever, mm-hmm. but um, it, it it's very clear that that's that's what the show is now. So, um, yeah, because you know, because for a while there, I was like, oh, episode four was a little different, but you know, probably get back to tr- back on track next week. Or, oh, episode five was really sort of bad, but I'm um, sure next week it'll be back on track. And I mean, it it is it's not off track in terms of quality necessarily. Well, it kind of is, but I mean, like it's it's mm. <laughs> you know. It's just clear that there's two separate kind of um, styles of doing the Mandalorian, you know, show or whatever. There's there's two different approaches, and the one approach is like, I hope five episodes kind of about the main plot of the story, and then the other, you know, what I guess three are just kind of uh, side stories. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's I mean it's a little disappointing, um, but. I'm like expectations are lowered now and I kind of know what to expect and it's fine. 
<laughs> it's still really good. Like I still enjoy watching it. So, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, absolutely. But uh, you know, as a um, as a means of moving into the conversation about the rise of Skywalker here, I would say that uh, you know, first week or two when the Mandalorian was uh, brand new and fresh and uh, the new kid in town and all that and it was kind of at its sort of highest quality level. I guess episode three, maybe a lot mm-hmm. would argue, a lot of people would argue um, this, including you, Ryan, was, mm-hmm. is kind of the, the peak of the show. But yeah, those first couple weeks, I feel like there was a lot of discussion, you know, just amongst our friends even um, as, uh, dude, this is like, I'm more excited for this than I am for the rise of Skywalker. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, who knows if the rise of Skywalker will be good or not, but Either way, we've got the Mandalorian, and it's it's the best, and, and you know all that stuff, and um, it is great. It's really good, and it's been so much fun to watch it week to week. But uh, you know, these last couple episodes, I n- I never quite felt that way anyway. But you know, for me, these last couple episodes have put me in a place where it's like, you yeah, know, I mean, this is this is really cool and really fun, the Mandalorian. But you know, mm-hmm. the Rise of Skywalker for me, that's the that's the the main dish. You know what I mean? That's the that's the entree in my my Star Wars. Uh, season here is is going to be this um i think epic and uh you know huge movie and um the tv show is really fun also um but it's yeah it's not my it's not the thing i'm most excited about and it's not the thing that's going to be the most meaningful to me i guess mm. yeah um the Mandalorian. you know after uh after mando episode three i was uh i was just about on that like oh yeah th- this is this is next level uh, this is the future of Star Wars, and then it kind of has just been, like, TV since then. Um, mm-hmm. so, which is fine, and it's cool. But, yeah, I'm, it's, we can properly be hyped for Rise of Skywalker now, because there's nothing, uh, really taking away from that in the realm of Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, well, let's let's jump into to talking Rise of Skywalker. Um, we're gonna we have kind of a loose structure for talking about this. Um, I just put together a list of characters and kind of like what I'm thinking as far as they go. But um, I assume our conversation will kind of, you know, take some unexpected turns as we bring up different ideas and things. Mm. And so, um, yeah, it'll be uh, just one big conversation about the Rise of Skywalker and uh, what we think we're gonna see and what we hope we're gonna see next week. Um, that being said, there has been quite a few more TV spots and promo videos and all that kind of stuff in the last, what, I guess two weeks since we, we haven't done a a proper episode of this show, um, for two weeks because last weekend we did the, the force material, um, show, which was so much fun and, uh, it was, it was really cool to be on that. So I'll link to that episode in the show notes here in case anybody wants to go check that out, which you should. Um, side note, I just saw them tweet this morning about their Mandalorian chapter six episode featuring, um, a sci-fi novelist. And I was like, how did we get onto that show? You know what I mean? Those guys are so smart. Um, it's such a good show. They're so cool. And, uh, you know, they've had some amazing, um, guests on there in the last few, uh, weeks or the last month or so they had talking Bay 94 and blast mm-hmm. points and, uh, you know, uh, other journalists and, and novelists and stuff. And then like somehow we snuck in there and, and got, <laughs> got to, to join them for an episode. So that was really fun. Yeah, that was, um, there was like a conscious point for me when we were recording that episode, when, um, when I was like, I was talking and I was thinking about like how smart that show is and how dumb the words coming out of my mouth at that moment were (laughs) and it was uh it was pretty uh surreal and uh sad (laughs) well i think you represented yourself uh very well ryan but it and it but you know yeah those guys are great um Mm -hmm. and it was it was really fun so yeah Yeah. um so yeah we'll link to that but anyway rise of skywalker uh so i I I see the notes here, and you have them going by character. Before Mm. we get down to individual characters, let's make some predictions about what we think the overarching plot will be. Okay, yes, let's do that. Um, I I, I actually just realized, uh, speaking of dumb words coming out of faces and stuff, I I forgot uh, that I kind of lost my train of thought there. There has been a bunch of TV spots and different reveals, Mm -hmm. um, and some of it has been actually quite revealing. So I was going to say that we're not going to 
break any of those down or talk in detail about any of those like TV spots or whatever. But I'm also thinking that we shouldn't like avoid, like we're not going to pretend we don't know the things that have been revealed from, from those. So, and yeah. we're starting this conversation about the rise of Skywalker four days early, you know, before it comes out, whatever. Like if you, we're going to talk about the movie and what we think is going to happen and what we, what we think is mm-hmm. going on based on what we've seen. And we've seen a lot of stuff now. So if that's not something you want to hear because you're trying to go in, you know, as clean and blind as possible, then uh, maybe this isn't the conversation for uh, you. So I'm just throwing that out there. We'll we'll talk about some stuff. Because there's been a lot of people that have been like, dude, I'm not watching that stuff. You know, I'm, mm-hmm. I've, they're, they're showing too much. I'm out. Mm-hmm. So, we'll you know, we might talk too much, but we don't know anything. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But we watch and the stuff. By the time this episode goes up, the premiere will probably have happened. So like good good luck uh if you're still existing on social media and trying to avoid spoilers because that stuff is gonna be spoiled by tuesday oh yeah yes uh tomorrow night (laughs) at and and i'm gonna try to get this episode up uh, as quickly as possible because of the urgency Mm. of the uh, subject matter so hopefully i can get it up today um but uh no i'm i'm off social media tomorrow night like once the once the premiere starts or once the premiere is over i guess i'm i'm off social Mm -hmm. media so for sure until thursday night and i'm kind of uh looking forward to it so it'll be (laughs) cool it's the best thing to happen every two years is like like the the three days i take off social media (laughs) before a star wars movie yeah go for a walk you know yeah not Uh, be angry all the time yeah yeah for sure (laughs) right exactly yeah um no, that's a that's a great point. Are you gonna watch the the premiere tomorrow night? You're gonna no. live stream the premiere? No, no, no. no. Oh, wow. No, I'm mm. like I'm off the grid after we record this episode, basically. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Good for you. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, I will. Uh, I will be covering. Well, not covering it. I'll be watching it. So, mm. one of us will will have that uh, under control. Oh, hey, one more thing. Mm. Um, this has been an extended intro, but one more thing before we get into the conversation. Um, unfortunate announcement earlier this week. Um, the art of the Rise of Skywalker mm. is officially pushed back to March 31st, I believe. Yeah. Uh, I assume to coincide with the home video release of the Rise of Skywalker. So, mm-hmm. um, I mean, I don't think that's the reason it got pushed back, but I think that's the reason that... Um, they're choosing to release it then you know because if it was a production issue which i'm sure it's not it's probably a spoiler you know Mm -hmm. type thing they just don't want it out there um yeah and they want to be able to really cover the end of the movie because that's that's one thing that was nice about um the the last one the last jedi one it kind of started with covering the end of the force awakens Mm -hmm. i can't do that really with this one because there's there's not another one on the way so anyway we won't be reading that book uh next week unfortunately but um the visual dictionary still will still be coming out so yeah we'll focus on that and, and be excited for phil show stacks art of the rise of skywalker following in march it would be kind of cool if it does come out like day and date as the blu-ray because yeah. like then you can just you can like actually pause the movie and like you know do stuff like that <laughs> and like really break it down with the book in hand yeah yeah, and I, I mean, just like right now is, is Star Wars Christmas because it's literally Star Wars Christmas, you know, but uh, there's just so much content right now and so much going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and there will be, like, we'll be so busy just, like, freaking out for a couple weeks after seeing The Rise of Skywalker um, mm-hmm. and plenty of other things to do. So I think it'll be kind of nice when there's less going on um, in the spring mm-hmm. that have that, you know, booked. What I think a lot of us will be able to really focus on it and, um, you know, yeah, it should be good. So, yeah. all right, you want to talk about plot, Ryan? What, yeah. What, what, what kind of predictions do you want to make, or uh, or, or hopes do you want to communicate about the plot of the Rise of Skywalker? So, I think like we should just ground ourselves in that because I, I feel like the plot of the sequel trilogy has kind of been sometimes gets lost um, in the conversations about characters and legacy and all of that. Um, But I think, like, on a really broad, like, macro level, I think the plot is that the First Order has built up a massive army, uh, possibly um, under 
Palpatine um, in in some way. Um, we know, you know, the First Order is um, a result of his contingency plan. Um, you know, if, uh, if the Empire fell, um, and so the First Order is, like, doing everything right that the Empire did wrong. Um, and I think ultimately it will be, uh, futile because the First Order will be defeated in some capacity at the end of this movie. Um, and then the other main part of the plot is, um, the resistance was, by the end of The Last Jedi, was pretty much decimated, um, and we know in, like, books like Resistance Reborn that, and, uh, Star Wars Allegiance that, um, they've been trying to get allies to the side of the resistance, um, and, uh, and it's, I guess, like, the main plot is kind of the conflict for the, uh, the, the ruling system of the galaxy, um, which I think is, I think there's also, like, an interesting, um, like, story beat in the, um, in the overarching timeline of the sequel trilogy in that the the new republic was created and for all intents and purposes was kind of a failure it was kind of a failed government system for the galaxy that was pretty ineffective um and i've like we've been seeing you know details of that um I mean, since pre-Force Awakens, um, and I think it, like, really comes, hits home in, like, stuff like Bloodline, uh, the book by Claudia Gray, but also I think we're seeing that in The Mandalorian as mm -hmm. well, that the New Republic is not a peaceful, has not created, like, a peaceful galaxy or a, like, well structured and fair galaxy either uh yeah sure yeah no for sure i mean um i think it's it's i think that uh they their intentions are good you know and and mm -hmm. they're doing their best but you know if you even the way that that goal is is stated there it's like well they have not created this um uniform positive experience for everybody um it's a kind of an absurd task, you know, really, mm -hmm. if you think about like, um, it, it's sort of like if there was one government that, uh, was, um, you know, kind of overseeing the entire planet, you know, but then you multiply that, you know, to mm -hmm. a huge degree by having it be over this entire, um, galaxy. It's, it's, it's pretty crazy actually. And, you know, it's, it's, I think almost bound to be unsuccessful because of that. Mm -hmm. Um, but, I think that it's still, you know, the way it's being presented uh, in these, in the sequel era, um, it still has remained, I think, pretty true to its values to a large degree. So, um, yeah, you know, they're not able to eradicate all problems throughout the galaxy. They're not able to create a system that, you know, controls everything in a way that, you know, um, everybody's problems are solved. But that's almost, it just feels like, they're doing their best and uh it, it's probably a better system than obviously it's a better system than the fascist empire that came before it mm -hmm. and um there is a certain element of you know anakin talking to padme <laughs> in, in in the by a waterfall saying like you know well we should just have somebody who makes everybody's decisions for them and then we make sure everything goes the way it should be it's <laughs> like well e either you're going to have a messy system in which you know the 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 government or whatever does its best um but there's still going to be problems or you can have some controlling dictatorship that will just you know uh vaporize anybody who gets in its way and so uh, obviously mm -hmm. you know there's 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 uh different ways that 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 can kind of manifest or, or whatever but i i just i don't know i mean 
I feel like uh, I feel like the Star Wars movies in general, um, and Star Wars in general, it it puts its faith in people and in uh, heroes and in in personal stories and uh, you know all the the political stuff is, um, and by political stuff I don't mean um, ethical things. I mean the the actual literal politics of government. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like is kind of the backdrop for the human stories it tells more so than you know, than, than what the actual story is. It's like, well, yeah, I mean, uh, a new hope in, in, well, the original trilogy is about the rebellion, you know, kind of taking down this empire, but, um, it's when they blow up a death star, it's, it's a, a victory for the person who you're following. And, uh, it's a, it's a, a result of, of their personal growth and that sort of thing. And it's, it's more focused on the people I think than, than the the structure and the institutions that it's about to. Well, that's why I said we should do this plot part before we get into the characters. Yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah. that reason. But I do think it is interesting that um that all this stuff is known and it is um kind of in the in the forefront of the story and it always has been since a new hope. Like there's always been this i mean and especially in the prequels there's always like george always had this like he wanted to have this political stuff and these government systems and um all of that in there and i know like part of um you know obviously like he grew up in the generation where like you know vietnam was um a very you know big thing happening um and it was like post-world war ii so like obviously these ideas came from the real world and i i do i do like how they have in the sequel trilogy continued to uh you know have that be the um i guess like backdrop for the films like the the main it's the main it's the main story but it's also not anyone's main story like (laughs) um i think we're probably like on the further end of caring about caring about this stuff um i know that personally like i i love the galactic politics of star wars Uh um i'm super into all that stuff but i know that's not really what most people are going into the theater to see but I love yeah. that it's there. No, I agree. I, I, I find it really interesting. I think some of the choices they've made with it, too, are really interesting. Like, whole uh, Mon Mothma's whole, like, de-arming the, <laughs> the Republic thing is so interesting. Um, and it, it, there's a lot of it that uh, that is, is pretty um, compelling. I mean, the, the makeup of the First Order, um, the, the kind of intentions of the First Order, and the kinds of characters that they've written that kind of populate the First Order... Um, it's it's very compelling, and uh, if you want to think about twenty nineteen exactly as well, wanna, yeah. yeah. If you if you want to kind of dig into that and and focus on that stuff a little more, uh, I think they have created created it in a rich enough way that there's there's definitely some stuff that's meaty and mm-hmm. and, and very interesting in that. But it also I think just naturally is the kind of thing that is better better explored like in the supporting material than mm-hmm. in the movies themselves you know so they they kind of create the uh, the environment for that stuff or, or you know they sort of create the framework of it and then mm-hmm. you know it's it's really going to be you know comics and in uh well books and, and that kind of thing that are going to explore that in a more detailed way i guess but uh but no it is it is uh it is really good but at the same time it's like especially the force awakens you know it's so easy to miss most of the political stuff yeah and and i just think like they did a good job of coming up with an interesting way of continuing this galactic conflict and in a way of creating like new versions of the empire and the rebellion um Mm -hmm. but you know it's even pretty clear that the filmmakers themselves weren't too focused on the politics when they made that because Mm -hmm. uh it's easy to not even understand what's going on politically (laughs) in that movie yep um so you know Mm -hmm. and jj has been talking i read at least one interview where he he was talking about that i think was that rolling stone interview uh talking about that kind of stuff recently having to cut uh, or choosing to cut some of the the more the scenes that would more uh kind of set up that political conflict and that sort of stuff and um i don't know 
uh i'm I'm pretty happy with the way it's it's shaken out but uh yeah you know so cool yeah. all right politics well, yeah yeah um so do you how do you how do you see the that plot ending do you think it's just going to be the first order defeated or what do you um, think yeah I think so. Um, but again, I think it'll be pretty clearly tied to the characters and, and the victories or defeats that, that they kind of have. So um, I think it'll have a lot to do with Palpatine and what mm-hmm. happens to Palpatine uh, and also Kylo Ren. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't know. Cause, cause the, the only thing is, is sort of, well, number one, we've seen, an ending to a trilogy that features, you know, the rebellion defeating the empire. And so if they, if it, if it feels like that's just what happens again, I don't know how interesting it is Mm -hmm. at the same time. It's like, well, that's kind of has to be what happens because, um, that's what's going to be satisfying for audiences. Uh, but also this one being the la the ending, you know, cause we, you know, return of the Jedi felt like the end and then a new trilogy, occurred and it was like mm-hmm. oh i guess it, it wasn't really quite as over as we thought it was you know but i think that mm-hmm. they want this one to feel like it's really kind of the end of this conflict that's been going on for 60 years or 75 years or whatever and they, they really want to um bring it to a conclusion so if it's just like one side blows up the biggest battle station or spaceships of the other side i don't know if that'll feel quite as final you know what do mm-hmm. you think yeah i think it's it's hard because um because they pose so many interesting questions with um the beginning of the sequel trilogy era where um and then it like when you think about this stuff for like two seconds you're like oh yeah of course um like you know what what happened to all the you know all the stormtroopers after you know the the second death star was defeated like did they just go okay i'll you know i'll i'll just uh you know just just do this uh new republic thing now and obviously that's not been the case like we've seen um you know the way the stormtroopers um and former imperial soldiers like operate in the in stuff like battlefront 2 and in um the mandalorian and all this stuff like um so i think it's gonna be hard for now that they've like got us thinking about that kind of stuff and like put those ideas in our head it's gonna be hard if it is just like whoa here's the star killer base 2 how are they ever going to blow this up? Um, And then they blow it up and then it's like, oh, cool. The first order is defeated. But that would be weird because like, then we'd be like, well, what about all those first order troopers? And like, they were conditioned since childhood. And um, you know, like their loyalty is probably even stronger than Imperial stormtroopers. And like, um, you know, like all, yeah. So, that will be weird if uh <laughs> if they if they don't give us some sort of like closure on that cuz then it would just be like well isn't the same thing just going to happen again like there's not going to be a fourth trilogy so what's happening here yeah yeah i don't know um i i feel a little bit like the force awakens and even the last jedi um the f- films themselves I mean, yes, The Force Awakens opens up and it's like, hey, that conflict you thought ended, you know, only sort of ended and now it's it's kind of happening again. Um, but beyond that, you know, they don't really worry too much about that kind of stuff. And, and I just I kind of feel like coming into this final one, there's so much to deal with and so much to wrap up and stuff that it probably will just be. I think if the characters conclusions and everything are emotionally satisfying and, and you know, feel good, then. I, I think it can just sort of be like the good guys beat the bad guys. And, you know, um, if like Ray's story feels like it's concluded in like a really, you know, final way and Chewbacca's story and C-3PO's story and, 
you know, Finn and, and Poe's, and if all those stories kind of wrap up in a way where it's like, okay, I think that this character's arc is really complete. I think that it is a, an ending for all of these characters. And if Palpatine is like put down in a final way mm-hmm. that feels final, then I, I doubt audiences are going to come out of the movie too concerned about like, but well, what are all those, you know, stormtroopers that are still alive going to do, you know, not that it's not a good question to ask and not that it doesn't have, um, not that it, yeah, not that it's not a question that should be asked or whatever, but I just, like I was saying before, where you don't really think about that stuff too much until you start reading books and like, you know, getting into really digging into supporting material and stuff. I I think that'll kind of be the case with this movie too. Yeah. I think Palpatine is the key. Mm-hmm. to it um mm-hmm. which is a, a phrase we've heard, been hearing uh, <laughs> a lot palpatine is the key um because if it really is this story of him you know manipulating since the phantom menace like once if if everything you know that that's happened in these nine movies is was orchestrated by him then I think you're right. Like, if he goes down in a final way, like, I think that will be satisfying. Um, Will satisfy that plot. Because it's it's not like, oh, these are, you know, there's thousands of characters in these, like, delegations between, in these, like, governments and stuff that we're, like, following. Like, it's not the West Wing. Like, it's... Right. Um, like, we, it really does, like, kind of come down to this one dude, um, which I think is, like, you know, I still think bringing the Emperor into this, what whenever they planned it, um, if they planned it from the beginning or, you know, a year and a half ago or whatever, um, it's the key, it's brilliant, and it ties everything together in a surprising and cool way. Yeah. And I yeah. so I think that will be, like, the key to the end of um, the main plot. And then, you know, we can just assume that things will go on and... Uh, there will be ups and downs and maybe we'll explore that in some material down the road or maybe not. And it'll be right. time to just move on to a new era. Yeah. And I mean, I think, I, yeah, I think so. And I, th- I think the thing is too, like the force awakens as much as I've been saying like, Hey, it's not really that worried about the politics beyond kind of superficially laying out a framework for this conflict or whatever, as much as I've been saying that, um, it does, you know, like it acknowledges realities, right? Like uh, you have like Han and Leia separated and um, it that's a tough reality for people to accept. And it's it does, I guess if you if you look at the original trilogy and sort of say like, well, it's this fairy tale and it's, it's very good guys and bad guys and, you know, um, kind of a simplistic view of things. Uh, I think the sequel trilogy has done a good job of embracing that kind of storytelling while also acknowledging some of the, you know, some of the realities of how, of how the world works. And I guess mm-hmm. one of the realities is like, you can, you can win a battle, you can win a war, you know, you can install a, uh, an ethical government, but that doesn't mean like conflict goes away forever. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it, it just follows that eventually there will be issues that need to be addressed. And um, I think this movie can feel like it has a final conclusive, ending to this nine movie story without having to you know kind of argue all war is over forever now you know what i mean like yeah. it, it can do both it can yeah, yeah. so anyway I, yeah yeah i now now i do think a little bit like is there a possibility that with palpatine and apparently him having his own fleet and all that coming into the mix is there a possibility that like somehow the first order could kind of like realize that Palpatine's their enemy too. And then somehow the, the, the resistance and the first order kind of come together to attack. Stormtrooper rebellion. Yeah. Finn sort of, leading you know. that stormtrooper rebellion. And if they're, if their Supreme leader, um, decides to kind of turn, uh, turn baby face and, uh, and kind yeah. of, uh, attack Palpatine and the empire, 
Um, I could I could kind of see it, but it's it it that feels like a first order redemption. Very yes, <laughs> yeah, and to a certain extent, yeah. You know, just I I feel like it could it could it could I don't know. It, it yeah. feels like it would be so hard to pull off and not have it be the cheesiest like goofiest thing. Well, but and not it have it feel bad. Um, because I think it's the same thing we're going to get to when we talk about Kylo Ren and his, um, you know, Ben Demption. But like, again, the First Order have done horrible things. Like, they've ruined so many lives. They've eradicated so many lives and just like decimated planets and, um... I think it would be, I think that would be even harder to stomach for me than Kylo Ren. Because, like, I I feel that, like, <laughs> the First Order are just legitimately bad people. Yeah. <laughs> like, because there's no, like, I mean, unless Palpatine was manipulating every single person in <laughs> the First Order, like... Right. I mean, right. maybe it was, but yeah. I mean, they're, the, I mean, they're, they're, they're representative. Stuff. They're representative of neo fascism in a very clear way. So yeah. if the movie ends with like, well, the neo fascists weren't that bad, you know, after all, that's yeah. not like, don't. I guess maybe don't draw such a clear comparison to the evils of the real world. If in the end you're going to be like, you know, but you can, we can all get along. You know what I mean? Like it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. don't know about that. Yeah. Um, and I do think there there could be something with the um child conditioning um in the same way, you know, in the same way it was like built into the the there was like a an off switch built into like the clones DNA and like so order 66 was able to happen. Mm-hmm. And stuff. I mean, like there is that potential because the um you know the the child soldiers that the first order recruited um have been conditioned since birth Mm. and we and you know they've like all that stuff is mostly in the ancillary materials but like they do make a big deal in force awakens of like we can track you know, these soldiers and, like, you know, what they do. And uh, we can tell if they fired their weapons and all of these things. Like, that stuff is consistently monitored. So there is some, like, strong conditioning there that I don't know if it's, like, programming that can be reversed or Mm. if that's just, like, them just being, like, doing fascist stuff, being fascist. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think there's an outside chance that they could pursue that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Um, uh, but I don't think I, I don't think it's that likely, and I don't really think I like it that much. You know what I mean? Uh, but but I'm not. I'm I, I'm saying I guess like my my stance or whatever is like I could I could see it. It does like the pieces are there if they wanted to mm-hmm. kind of pursue that or whatever. But um, I'm I'm skeptical that that could be done well. You know, yeah, I, I think it would be kind of tough to explain to an audience mm-hmm. or to expect the audience to care. Yeah, and I like I like Finn as the as the stormtrooper that, you know, broke through his programming or was able to resist that and mm-hmm. you know, it makes his story so compelling. If this movie's like, oh, then every other stormtrooper had that same awakening or whatever, that same kind of it just, I mean, it's a feel good thing, I guess. Like all the bad guys turn good, but at the same time, it kind <laughs> of is like we just duplicate what happened with Finn a million times over. It kind of, I don't know. I like Finn as the. I just, I'd like all these stories, all this kind of stuff told in a more personal, you know, way with a specific kind of example. Or it's it's that's Finn's journey. It's not every stormtrooper's journey, you know. Yeah, so. and I th- I think, now that I think about it, I think about, like, how it would make me feel as, like, a human living in 2019. And yeah. I think if a movie presented me with the idea that, like, all the bad people in the world who are, like, doing horrible things to others, like, all of them can just change in a moment 
like if they presented that re that as like a reality in the actual reality we're living in right now like i think that would feel pretty gross yeah yeah and i can already hear the people saying hey it's fake and it's in space and it's a movie and all that you know um as as people do bring up a lot and i think that's a great point when it comes to pedantic little arguments about whether bombs can fall in space or not but i think when it comes to what is the message that this movie sends to its audience i Mm -hmm. don't think if it's fake and in space it doesn't matter i don't think that's a good um retort you know like it has to have something to say and Mm -hmm. it does you know the star wars movies they do have something to say they have to have a message they have to have um preferably multiple messages (laughs) yes right right (laughs) and complicated ones yeah yeah and so if they send one that's troubling and uh and you know uh, if they send a, a message that's not um, doesn't land in 2019 mm-hmm. with, with audiences and it doesn't really equate to understanding like you know these movies are supposed to be a lens for kids but people everywhere to kind of better understand the world around them and you know mm-hmm. how to be a person and uh, mm-hmm. I, you, well, it's going to come up with Kylo Ren too but uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know if you know you can murder and slaughter and uh, and completely you know be horrible Um for years and years uh, and then turn on a dime and just not pay the consequences for that. I don't think that's, that's, it's, it's tough with Kylo Ren we're, we'll get to him soon, but it's tough yeah. with Kylo Ren because the, you know, hope is the primary kind of argument of these movies. Right. And so mm-hmm. um, you do want to have hope, but at the same time, I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can tell audiences these days that uh, there aren't uh, consequences for, mm-hmm. you know, your actions. So, mm-hmm. It's a it's a tricky road that they're they're gonna have to follow here. So we'll see. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's talk about Ray. Let's talk about yes. something positive. Yes, yes. My favorite uh, my favorite character in all of Star Wars, maybe. Um, mm-hmm. Pretty mm-hmm. pretty high up there. Pretty close. And uh, I think my my thing with this movie and with Ray is that coming out of the Force Awakens, um, I was so sold on Ray. I still am. I loved Ray so much. But you know, it was clear to me that she was the heart of this new trilogy of movies i know you don't like that term ryan but uh Mm -hmm. she uh, she was she's she is the she is the heart of this this trilogy for me her story Mm -hmm. is the most essential story it's the most meaningful story and you know um i think through ray is is the way that this this series of movies communicates um hope primarily you know and and Mm -hmm. i need this movie to fulfill the promise of Ray as this incredible character who is the center of this trilogy, who is the, the primary um, kind of character in this trilogy. And so I want whatever happens with her in this movie to be cementing her as this really critical um, and important figure in this story, uh, in this nine part story. I want mm-hmm. her to be really important and, and to be, um, the key figure in in these three movies, and and I want this story to kind of integrate her as the key figure of these three stories, but an essential part of the nine story thing. Mm-hmm. The, the, yeah, the nine movie thing. Um, and so, uh, I, yeah, that's what I want. And what I'm a little concerned about, I like, I love Kylo Ren as a character. Like I think he's so deliciously complicated and such an incredible villain. Um, and you know, Ryan Johnson, I totally love the last Jedi. I totally love JJ Abrams. I totally love, but in the last few years, there's been so much discussion from straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak, you know, from the people making these movies about how like Ray and Kylo are really like dual protagonists of the movie, whatever, Mm -hmm. you know, I like that. But at the same time, I care much more about Ray than I do about Kylo Ren in terms of what happens to them in the movie, you know? Um, I don't want necessarily, I think it's going to do this, but I don't necessarily want episode nine to sort of make what happens with Kylo as important as what happens with Ray. Mm. I just don't want Kylo's story to take away from Ray's story, I guess. That's, that's, that's something I'm a little concerned about. Yeah. I, I feel that, um, I'm, I'm pretty on the dual protagonist side. 
Um, I, I feel that very strongly. I think that's one of the strengths of, I think it is the core strength of the, uh, the sequel trilogy. And, um, I think it also makes the sequel trilogy unique, um, from the other trilogies. Um, and I think, like, I want, um... Ray and Kylo to, you know, get equal time to have their stories told. And I want them, you know, done equally well. And I want them to be connected, but also, you know, based on who they are as individuals. And it's an impossible task. Um, but yeah. um, I a- absolutely agree with you that I don't want kylo's story to overshadow rays yeah um i but i do uh i do want them to be equal but i don't want uh kylo's to be the the core or the most important story okay yeah i hear you there and i i I would clarify for myself anyways like there in my mind there is no argument that they are both the I don't know, protagonist quite the right word because he's the villain, but the, the, mm-hmm. the, the, they are both the, the story is about both of them and you can't separate their stories. Their stories are mm-hmm. at this point after The Last Jedi, especially completely mm-hmm. intertwined. Um, and it, when I, yeah, I, I think that, that Kylo's story is so interesting and so compelling. It should be center stage along with Ray's story. Mm-hmm. Where I'm at is like, he's been a villain for these two movies. And I think most of the Rise of Skywalker, he will be as well. Um, and she has been this wonderful ray of light, you know what I mean? And it's not about time on screen, but it's about however they choose to wrap up this story of these two characters. Like, I hope, and I think I think it will be, but I hope that the emphasis is on let's make things right for Ray and let's do right by Ray with this story. Mm-hmm. Um, that doesn't mean like, oh, we get less time with Kylo. It just means like, I don't want, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I, I just, I don't want it to, it's not overshadowing like, you know, too much screen time for Kylo and not enough for Ray. It's overshadowing mm-hmm. in terms of like how this is resolved needs to be like the, the best story they can tell for Ray. Of it. What's that? Like the karma of it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, and, and I don't I, want, I don't want her story just to be about like, if it's just about redeeming him or something, you know what I mean? Yes. Because mm-hmm. that's then it's like, oh, you're taking this person's story and just like everything I do is for you, Kylo, and it's about saving you, and it's really it's been about Kylo the whole time, and it's yep. like, no, he doesn't deserve that, you know. And I'm not saying he doesn't deserve to be redeemed or he can't be redeemed, but it can't be like the primary thing that Ray accomplishes in this movie for me to be satisfied. I don't think it can be just saving Kylo Ren. Yep, I don't like that. Um, and, 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 I and think, you could argue, sorry, real quick, sorry. Yeah, yeah. You could argue in, in, in Return of the Jedi, it's like, well, what's, what's Luke's primary accomplishment? He saves Darth Vader, you know? But that's beautiful. That's his, that's his father, and it's, you know, it's this, it's this generational thing. And there's, I think there's something to that that's not there when it's like a woman saving a man who's been awful to her for two movies in a row. That's just not, that's not what I want. Yep. Sorry. And that, no, you actually brought up exactly my point. It's another one of those things like, how does this feel in 2019? Yeah. How would it feel for this, like, you know, hardworking woman who's like constantly told she's nobody to save this toxic dude who grew up in privilege and squandered it? Yeah. Like, that would feel horrible to, I so. to me i think that would be like it would send a ton of bad messages it, it would absolutely sour the movie for so many people um uh yeah that's exactly what i don't want mm-hmm. yeah i'm with i'm with you now i full, i should say this i fully expect that when we think back about this conversation we're having you know after we see the movie that I'm there's going to be so many lines I've drawn in the sand during this conversation that are going to turn out <laughs> exactly the way I said I didn't want them to. Yeah. And I'm going to be fine with it because it's going to be done well. So all this mm-hmm. stuff that I'm saying anyway, I would, you know, place that caveat on it that it's like I'm probably wrong. 
they probably will do some stuff that I'm saying they better not do this or I'm going to be pissed. Like they probably will do some of that stuff, but hopefully they'll do it well. And I'll be like, you know what? I didn't think it would work or I didn't see it, you know, working out correctly or whatever. And I'm actually fine with it. So I'm hoping it'll go that way. If, if, if things, you know, obviously I'm hoping it'll go that way. If things I don't want end up being in the movie, um, Mm -hmm. I I guess on this whole Kylo thing, it's possible that, uh, the way he's pres- like this is a two hour and 20 minute long movie. There's a lot of time in the movie that Kylo can be different, I guess, or presented differently. And so maybe like the way he is presented in this movie throughout the movie will lead to me having a different feeling about like whatever happens mm-hmm. to him in the end, you know, I guess. But based on what I've seen so far, I we're, I mean, we're obviously definitely on the same page here. It's like an abusive mm-hmm. guy should not be just, I'll just stick around and let you be awful for long enough until I can change you. Like, I just don't really like that story for Ray. So, yeah. 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 Um, I think the one line in the sand I will draw is that actual fascists are irredeemable (laughs) and should get what's coming to them. So, (laughs) um, uh, well, I mean, mean, yeah, but that's certainly true for Darth Vader. Right. And it's not how return of the Jedi ends. But can you just do that a second time in a row? You know what I mean? It just doesn't seem like it. Um, And I think the only reason it works is because he dies, you know? And so, yeah, I don't know. Hey, man, look at us. We're having this conversation about Rey, but it's really about Rey and Kylo. Um, So Mm -hmm. for for the people who argue like, hey, you know, Rey and Kylo, Kylo and Rey, like they're inseparable. It's it's one story, et cetera. Um, Kind of proving them right through... I say them, but I mean, I'm basically in agreement with that perspective. Mm-hmm. So proving us right, I guess, by, by, by not being able to separate the conversation about Ray from Kylo and Kylo from Ray. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I also do want to point out that, um, Ray's story should be and it seems will be a little bit more complicated than her as just like a pure uh, ray of light, um, yeah. as you said, because That's I true. think um, we did see a more co- complicated and conflicted side of her in The Last Jedi, uh-huh. um, you know, during during her training. And, you know, we've seen, obviously, the... Um, footage in the in the trailer saying you know everyone thinks they know me no one does and then obviously kylo says but i do um yeah (laughs) um and then we've also seen that uh you know that shot of her with the um hooded with the with the red lightsaber and everything um and i think like what i would love for them to explore is like which is something like Star Wars has touched on before, but it's never been like a key cornerstone. I know it was supposed to be a bigger part of Return of the Jedi, but it wasn't. The idea that like, you know, good people can have darkness within them. Um, and like, and it doesn't just like go away and you become like a pure great person. Um, but like you can have like, anger and cynicism and nihilism like within you um but it's like how do you keep that at bay and then i think um you know i think it's it's made into like a sci-fi movie fantasy thing when you have like this person's also physically very powerful and has these like you know spiritual powers as well um how you know how do you on that like super exaggerated stage like how do you also like keep all that in check Uh uh-huh yeah yeah and you know you were right to kind of criticize my comment uh about uh ray being this you know ray of pure ray of light and all that stuff um because it is like kind of oversimplifying the 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 concept of the character and it's it's sort of you know, phrasing it that way kind of makes it seem like, well, yeah, Ray's just like, she's just pure good and that's all there is to her. And it's sort of like reducing her to like this overly simplistic character or whatever, um, which I don't want to do. But at the same time, like I think about like, you know, Luke Skywalker, who I love and uh, in who I think is like an incredible character. And and Ray is the reason, you know, at the top of the show, 
and, and right after Force Awakens and for a long time I've been saying Ray might be my favorite character like in all of Star Wars. It's like mm-hmm. the reason I feel that way is because it's partially like I love Luke Skywalker and I feel like Ray is almost like a, a better version of Luke Skywalker, you know? Um, and I love that because that would really frustrate a lot of people who are like, <laughs> you know, Luke, Luke Skywalker's <laughs> their everything and the original trilogy, trilogy is their everything. Yeah. Um, I love Luke and I love the original trilogy, but not in a way where it's like, you know, everything should be subservient to it. So I would actually be thrilled if I walk out of this movie feeling like, you know what, Luke Skywalker's fantastic, but like Ray is the best hero we've ever seen in Star Wars, you know? Cause you, cause you, I mean, you can watch the prequels and be like, wow, Anakin was a pretty, you know, heroic character until he wasn't anymore, you know? Mm-hmm. And you can watch the original trilogy and be like, wow, Luke is a, a really great hero and, and did things better than the generation before him. And he's certainly a better hero than his father was, you know? I'd love mm-hmm. to come out of the rise of Skywalker and be like, Ray is the best hero we've seen in Star Wars. Like she, mm-hmm. she's the one who did it best. You know what I mean? She was like the best example of that. Um, but you can't have a character. You, you, it couldn't feel that way if she didn't have to overcome a lot. And, you know, part of that would be being tempted, will be in this movie, I'm sure, being tempted by the dark side, being, making mistakes, you know. Um, we've already seen her have failures. I mean, she failed in The Last Jedi because everybody fails in The Last Jedi. But, mm-hmm. you know, we, it's not like she's just been a smiley, happy ray of sunshine with no conflict and no mistakes, you know. As Luke mm-hmm. says in The Last Jedi, she went straight to the dark side. Like, we, we need all that. We want all that for her character mm-hmm. to be complete and for her story to feel complete. But I also, like, when it's all said and done, I would be thrilled if I could walk away saying, like, there's no better Jedi than than Rey, you know. there hasn't. I haven't seen a better example of the principles of the light side of the Force embodied in a person than in this hero of Rey. That would make me really happy. And I think one of the things that would make that possible is her arc with Luke in The Last Jedi and her seeing, you know, what heroes can become and how, like, how easy it is to get sidetracked by a failure. And, um... And I think, like, that's a super, like, poignant story just, you know, on its own. Um, but again, and then, like, you know, what what Yoda tells Luke about, you know, um, we, we are what they become and, uh, you know, failures. We are what they the, grow beyond. What they grow beyond, yes. Like, <laughs> totally blanked on that it's so good Mm -hmm. um and then uh and then like failure is the best teacher and like those um those kind of principles like did was luke able to communicate that to ray in the end and i think like if we see those lessons manifesting even if it takes like a force ghost luke to come back and be like you know remember (laughs) failure is the best teacher Mm -hmm. uh you know don't don't end up like me and i think we will get something like that and i think it will be amazing and um you know if if she can take those lessons to heart and we see that like manifest on screen like that's going to that's going to be where she uh in wrestling terms is completely over yes yeah 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 Oh, no, and, and, and I've got it later in the notes here, I think. Well, no, I don't, actually, but uh, I, I actually did not even make a, uh, in our in our notes, I didn't even put anything for Luke in there. There's no category for Luke to talk about Luke, but, um, I mean, I think his role will be kind of minor, uh, but meaningful. Um, yeah, I, I, I really look forward to uh, the conversation between Luke and Ray, or conversations between Luke and Ray. Um, I hope, I don't think they'll really need to, I think, I, hopefully Luke can be a figure for her in this movie that is like, uh, reinforces things for her or motivates her, inspires her, whatever, without having to like, without having to re state the ideas of the last Jedi or or having to like, you know, replay, Oh, Ray, I shouldn't have, you know, I should have gone with you when you came to Octo. Like I I hope they can avoid (laughs) having to like say that stuff, but, in the way that in whatever role he plays for her in this movie and whatever conversations they have, et cetera, that like it can, 
you can understand that, you know, through whatever he's doing for her in this movie or however they're interacting. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, I, we should mention at least briefly, Ryan, I think I know how you'll feel about this, but, um, the, the most recent TV spots have been heavily emphasizing the idea that we are for sure going to learn more about Ray's story in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, the most recent one that I've seen actually features Kylo Ren saying, I found out the truth about your parents, Ray, or whatever. Like, I, I know, <laughs> I, know act- your, I know your actual story. Like, the story that you, it's not done. I know more about it, you know? Um, yep. So, like... <laughs> Basically... <laughs> The way that, the, I mean, the way that the marketing for Star Wars trailer, you know, these Star Wars movies specifically, mm. sometimes is talking right to the audience. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, absolutely. The, the, it's been happening <laughs> I mean, in the last couple of days. And like, this is like following a week before where we got Palpatine saying, let the final battle begin. <laughs> he didn't quite say that, but yes, like, okay. This will be the final battle in the Skywalker, the story of Skywalker, or whatever. Yeah, and then um, that which I love laugh. personally, yeah, it's, but, but it's fine. But it's um, ridiculous. It's telling. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. It's speaking yeah. straight to the audience. It's, All right, but the audience know in certain terms. Yeah. Yeah. Some some of the audience needs to be spoken to like that. Yeah. Though. You know they uh, don't know what's going on. So. Well, also, and I think the last few uh, trailers have uh, really spoken to. People who didn't care for the Last Jedi. Yeah, yeah, I think sure, surely that's that's true. That is true. Mm-hmm. But, uh, well, I don't know how how cynical or naive we want to be um, regarding all this stuff. But hopefully, JJ Chris Terrio, the other creatives at, at Lucasfilm, hopefully there is a story that they wanted to tell with Ray that they are telling because they want to tell it. Um, mm-hmm. And if that's the case, I personally do not begrudge them in selling the movie to audiences, taking advantage of that to make people who were dissatisfied with Ray's story in The Last Jedi want to see this movie. Like, if if they're writing this backstory for Ray because it's a reaction to people not liking The Last mm-hmm. Jedi, that sucks. Ooh. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I would never say that doesn't suck. Yeah. At the same time, if. This is just what they wanted to do with Rey anyway. Mm-hmm. Why not tell people who didn't like her story in The Last Jedi, like, there's more to it. You might like yeah. this, you know? I mean, they should do that. So I don't yeah. have any problem with that as long as it's not the motivating factor for this backstory for Rey actually existing in the movie, you know? Yeah, yeah. So. It's just it's just funny how it comes across in the marketing materials. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you, well, let's, what do you think is going to be this reveal about Rey's backstory her family whatever um i don't know i like i don't even want to go down this road again like i felt like that conversation was exhausted by the time we got to last jedi yeah and then last jedi was like it's this and then we're like oh okay cool let's move on um and i'm hoping that i'm what i want it to be is like Oh, there's obviously there's something special about her. Um, yeah. You know, Dan was saying um, in a text message last night, he's like, you know, obviously like characters know something about her. Like, you know, people, you know, talk about this girl. There's something going on there that characters know or like, think could be happening um but like the audience still is in the dark on um Uh and so i think there is something that needs to be addressed and i don't think like the last jedi closed the door completely on that yeah um but i think like what should happen is there should be like another layer to it that obviously doesn't contradict the last jedi um but i don't think it has to be the the conversation we were having um you know after force awakens like is she a solo is she a kenobi is she a skywalker like we're like i hope we don't go back to that place um but i think yeah there's like there's something else there for sure Yes, I am with you. Uh, I'm with you 100. Um, percent 
you know, I was one of the people after The Force Awakens who, I mean, most of us were, but like trying to figure out who does she belong to? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Who is she Who is she a, a descendant of or whatever? Um, and then I think what Ryan Johnson did with it in The Last Jedi is so much better, which is like, no, she's in this story because she matters because she matters. Um, she's mm-hmm. not, and, and, and Dan, you know, Dan, hopefully Dan doesn't mind me quoting, misquoting his text messages on, on the show here since he'll be, he'll be on the next episode. So you can set me straight if I'm, if I'm misquoting him or whatever, mm-hmm. but you know, he, he said something to the effect of like, I, I need there to be, you know, something with her backstory or whatever. So that like the character will matter, you know, like, cause right now it doesn't feel like the character matters in like the larger scheme of the story. He didn't say exactly that, but it was, mm-hmm. I think that's what he was, you know, basically meant. Um, and, and I just like, to me, I just don't feel that way. Like, I feel like she matters because of her place in this story, because of what she represents, like being that, that she's the hero, you know, like when I, you watch, uh, a new hope and I mean, obviously Luke's father is Anakin, this great pilot and Obi-Wan is like his surrogate uncle or something who gives him the lightsaber and all that. But at the same time, like Luke's great in that movie because Luke is great, you know, like you just, Mm -hmm. you identify with him as like this heroic figure and somebody who wants to do right by the galaxy and wants to be the best version of himself he can be. And I feel the same way about Ray and I don't need her to be connected to something from the past to feel like that's important. Like she is, she's important because of like, who she is, you know, everybody. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's a great message because like, you know, people are, <laughs> people matter. Everybody matters, right? Individuals matter. And they don't, it doesn't have to be because of what they've accomplished or it doesn't have to be because of who their family is or mm-hmm. what they've descended from or whatever, you know, like, mm-hmm. and it does, they don't have to do some earth shattering, you know, thing, make some big impact on, you know, the larger society or something, they don't have to have a super great career to matter. They don't have to be, you know, like you just, people matter. And I think like Star Wars values people. Um, and, 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 and it's a, the, the story would argue that, that human beings, individuals are important, that they matter. And so to reduce it to like, well, she's got to be from here. She's got to be from there. Otherwise she's not, she doesn't matter enough. Like, I just don't, I almost feel like she matters more when she's not connected to something else like that. Yeah, and that's what I loved about what Ryan did with um, The Last Jedi. I know, like, right after it, you know, with the stuff with Rey, um, you know, being quote-unquote nobody, which, you know, Kylo says, like, you're nobody, but, like, we as the audience are like, ah, no, (laughs) and that's the perfect reaction. Um, And then also with, um, you know, Broom Boy at the end, um, you know, we were we were talking, I, I remember a lot of the conversation was about, like, the democratization of the force. Mm-hmm. And, um, and you know, how it how it's no longer, re- like, restricted to this, like, basically single bloodline. Um, and I, you know, I thought that was amazing. And it made me, like, so much more excited for the future of Star Wars than you know, even the force awakens did. Uh And, um, because like, oh wow, now we have like the, you know, the, the gloves are off the restriction, the restraints are off. Um, they have been removed. Now we can like tell all different kinds of like Star Wars stories and stories involving the force and stuff like this is really exciting. Um, and so I loved, you know, I loved what that represented. And as long as, you know, that's still represented in um, The Rise of Skywalker. Like, I'm pretty okay with however they take it. Mm-hmm. But I think the the big thing to me is that if she, if it does come down to, like, a bloodline thing, I think that's a little disappointing just because I think, again, dual protagonists, she makes such a great foil to Kylo Ren because he has that mighty Skywalker blood and, you know, and, and she doesn't and he, yeah, and so you he know, feels he has entitled. Yeah. Because... And he has all this privilege and like, again, it's a very, like, it's a very 2019 story. Like mm-hmm. it's something that we are, you know, talking about like inherited wealth, inherited privilege, mm-hmm. um, you know, all these things like 
you know, did billionaires really earn? Can you really be like a a billionaire that a self-made earned it? billionaire? Yeah, yeah. It, does that even exist? Right. Um, and you know, again, like I think spoilers, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, billionaires should not exist. Uh, to quote Bernie, um, but uh, sorry, Bob Iger. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think yeah. he's a billionaire. You're the know. good one. I don't think he is a billionaire anyway. But he is. Is he? He's got to be. He's got to be. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Read his right. book. Um. But yeah, I think. Uh, I think. Yeah, that's important to me. That's something that's important. I think the message, um, therein is important to me, and it kind of it that goes back to what you were talking about. Like, is is. Star Wars telling a story about people matter or is Star Wars telling a story that Skywalkers matter? Yeah. And, and here's the thing though, like uh, we, we, I've mentioned hope a few times as being like the primary kind of, you know, theme or whatever um, of, of Star Wars, but also destiny is incredibly important, you know? And like mm-hmm. it has been a lot of times destiny because of where you come from and who you come from, you know, like Luke Skywalker, your destiny to redeem your father, et cetera. Um, mm-hmm. But I think destiny could play an important factor, an important role in sort of learning more about who Ray is without having to connect it to like a bloodline or a family or whatever. So I, I kind of would like Ray to be this generation's chosen one. And by chosen one, I mean like chosen by the force, you know, in Mm -hmm. some way. So I don't know that she needs to be an immaculate conception type thing like Anakin was or is or whatever, (laughs) but I would like it like, Oh, we've learned more about your story. It's like the force awakens, you know, that was the title of the first movie in this original trilogy. Maybe the force woke up and said like, we need a hero. And you know what, this girl, this, this independent, you know, um, uh, never had anything handed to her in her life. Like amazing person, this amazing individual who we mm-hmm. all fell in love with in 10 minutes watching the force awakens when she, mm-hmm. s- you know, sledded down that hill and put that helmet on and you yep. know, made her little save rising and didn't sell him for yeah. 60 portions. Like this amazing person, this incredible yep. person that they were able to tell you that. And you were able to feel that and believe that and love her so much just from that opening segment of the force awakens Mm -hmm. and everything that's followed but like i don't need her to be a skywalker to love her like i loved her from the first 20 minutes of the force awakens she's amazing and i i I would kind of like it if her story like this more that we learn about her story is that you know what like it's not just the audience that recognized that she's an incredible person it's like the force chose her to be Mm. her destiny to be the hero of this story not because of where she came from but almost in spite of where she came from, you know, because like, she's just that she is the hero. Like she represents those qualities that, you know, um, that, that we need in a hero. And, and I think that would be great. And it could be really interesting too, because, you know, there's, there's been obviously a thought for a long time that perhaps, you know, with Anakin being the chosen one or whatever, like, yeah, he's the chosen one, but who chose him? Because it almost feels like from some of the backstory that Palpatine's the one who chose him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That Palpatine mm-hmm. manipulated the Force to create Anakin. Um, and it's like, pfft, like Palpatine's still around. <laughs> you know what I mean? And Palpatine's still out there, you know, trying to orchestrate things. Well, you know, what if the other side of the Force kind of fought back somehow? And, and Rey is, is their answer to Palpatine. You know, yeah. So, so you're we're getting pretty into like Mortis territory now, um, and and I'm here. Yeah, for but it. but 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 the way that the the way that it's done in Mortis and the Clone Wars and that sort of thing is that you get a visual representation of all this <laughs> stuff, know. and you get I actual know. characters physically embodying these ideas, and it could just be a lot more mystical and ambiguous in this movie, and it would still yeah. be cool. And I love, I love this. I this is uh, I'm I'm so into this. I because I love in the prequels the idea that Anakin's the chosen one and he was chosen to bring balance to the force mm-hmm. and obviously no one like questioned like wh- what needed balancing um but I think it's I mean it's so perfect now that Ray would be the chosen one and 
you know, rebalancing things because stuff has gotten pretty dark. Uh huh. And it doesn't have to be the chosen one with capital letters necessarily yeah. either, because that kind of, I mean, I could see like, well, hey, it's George, you know, George has been emphatic. Anakin is the chosen one, you know, because some yeah. of us, including me, are, are a little tempted to look at Luke and be like, well, you know, maybe maybe the prophecy misread it was because it seems like Anakin was the chosen mm-hmm. one, but it's like, it's really Luke's, I mean, to me, the Return of the Jedi is Luke's victory, not Anakin's, you know what I mean? Uh Anakin throws Palpatine down the shaft. Anakin brings balance to the Force, but only because Luke carried him on carried him on his shoulders that whole movie. You know what I mean? It's it's Luke's accomplishment. So, but whatever. George Lucas is he created all this. He decided sometime in the '90s that it was going to become Anakin's story, not Luke's. And uh, you know, Anakin's the chosen one. That's fine. Um, Ray doesn't have to be the chosen one in capital letters, like the official, yeah. like the Jedi. You know, had a prophecy about it, chosen one. But just, I just love the idea that, you know that's where her value it's not where her value comes from it's almost more like she is so valuable that even the force is recognizing that you know what i mean and and choosing her to be the one that will be the hero of this story i like that okay and, um oh sorry go ahead i think and this kind of goes back to plot um and you know when we talk about when we talk about like these opposing government systems and like how that's going to work out i think like the opposing spiritual forces as well um with the jedi and the sith do you feel like the jedi and the sith are going to continue beyond this movie and do you think that will be something that's established one way or another at the end of skywalk rise of skywalker if like you know, the Jedi Order is going to be rebuilt if, you know, if there's still going to be like a Sith threat down the road yeah. or is that stuff going to be completely eradicated? Because I don't feel like you can eradicate one without the other. I'm right down the middle on this one. I think that I don't think there will be any Sith left standing at the end of this movie. Like, I don't think there'll be a Sith running off in their spaceship to go hide on some planet until they can return 30 years later or whatever. Like, I think mm-hmm. that, you know, the way Yoda does at the end of uh, Revenge of the Sith or something, like, I, I, no, I think any Sith that are around in this movie, I don't know if that includes Kylo Ren or not, but any Sith will be defeated. The Sith will be gone. That being said, I, I don't think there's... I don't see how you could look at it and be like, no dark side force user will ever rise up again in the future and assume that mm-hmm. mantle of the Sith or whatever. So um, I, I would say that, yeah, they'll be defeated in this movie, but I, I doubt it'll try to tell you they could never return, you know. Um, mm-hmm. As far as the Jedi go, I think that Rey is the future of the light side of the force, but I don't know if she'll restart the Jedi order if she'll start training other people if she'll start training other people but it you know it won't be called the Jedi anymore because they've seen the errors of the way of the ways of the Jedi etc I don't know um Mm -hmm. I I don't really think we need a new name for it though personally you know it's like well the Jedi were flawed in the prequels and the Jedi definitely made a lot of mistakes and you know that's how we got here but I think if Ray were to restart it and learn the lessons of the past and 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 choose a better path forward, I don't see why. Well, we won't call it Jedi anymore because they actually sucked, you know, or whatever. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I mean, they could, but I guess it's what I'm saying is that it's semantic, basically. At the end, I think th- whether the Jedi continue or don't, I think the Sith are gone. I think Ray continues, and I think Ray will continue to be, or that Ray will be posited or what a positioned as the uh, as the as the future of the light side of the Force. But what that looks like, I guess I don't know. Mm-hmm. What do you cool. think? Cool. Yeah. Um, do you want them to be called yeah. Skywalkers in the future? No, no I don't. Okay, I don't love checking. that. I no. don't love that. No, um, no I think um, I think that's pretty much where I fall on it. Yeah, I can't. I can't really see um, myself wanting anything more or different than that. Um, mm-hmm. Because I think if you do, yeah. Like, I think it will be, you know, there's the implication that, like, the Sith are defeated, but it's, like, one of those implications where, like, okay, well, I saw, you know, 
Palpatine in whatever form struck down in a final way this time. But, like, I think it's, like, it, it's an implication with an understanding that, like, yeah, there's, you know, there's always going to be evil in the galaxy. And it, yeah. you know, this will never go away and it's probably existing somewhere else right now and it's like forming and like it's again like the the force you know balancing things out like you know as soon as Palpatine goes down we're we're gonna need something to kind of fill that void um which is like I don't know. That's also kind of like depressing and hopeless in like an equal way because it's like, well, you know, no matter what. But I guess that's also like reality. Like, you know, you can, you know, just because Hitler died doesn't mean that all <laughs> evil went away um, in the world. So Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and it's going to be interesting, too. I think this movie is going to address the balance of the force, the concept of the balance of the force or whatever. Mm. But I don't really know how. And uh, I've we've kind of argued about it on the show in the past, Ryan. Um, so I think we have maybe slightly different opinions on this. But like, yeah. I don't like the concept of the balance of the force as you know, equal on both sides mm -hmm. is balanced. I like mm -hmm. balance of the force as like, things are made right you know what i mean things are things are the way they should be and and the way they should be is not that darkness doesn't exist but i don't personally really subscribe to the idea that like well you know the force would be balanced if you had uh 10 jedi and 10 sith because then you've got like you know an equal amount of good guys and bad guys or whatever or you know that kind of thing and i don't think the force would be balanced like and there's a lot of discussion too of like well ray and kylo balance each other out because he's like super bad and she's like super good to me, mm -hmm. that's not balance. You've got a problem there. When you've got a mass murderer running around, like, slaughtering people and being super evil, like, to me, it's not like, but if they just, like, hang out together in a room that's half white and half black and, like, he continues being evil and she continues being <laughs> good, then they balance each other, right? It's sure. balanced. It's like, no. You know how they'd be balanced? If he was like her, that would make them balanced, not her, like, being more like him, you know? And I know I'm oversimplifying it, and, like, mm. obviously there's there's a whole way of thinking f philosophically in the world that really values the concept of balance. And I think balance is good. But like, to me, if I'm going to be a balanced person, it's not about like, I'll be equally selfish and equally, you know, selfless. It's about find finding the best way for me to be the best person I can be. Mm -hmm. And you don't ignore darkness and it's not like you pretend there is no darkness within you, mm -hmm. but to like have them be like equally, Oh, they're equally balanced. Like I just don't, that's not how I think it, what balance is um so it'd be really interesting to see how they kind of i think that i i mean they haven't really said much about it but i feel like they will kind of try to have some kind of conclusive answer to that question and i guess the way that this ties into what we had been previously talking about is that i think at the end of the movie it'll be like the sith are defeated you know the heroes continue um but it's not so naive as to suggest it's like there's a finality to that you know that that evil won't necessarily rise again in the future or that you can just, you know, uh, go back to, uh, what's that little town, the Shire and, you know, everything will be happy <laughs> and, and, you know, pure forever now because the good guys won. It's like, well, the good guys won in their story, you know, but there's every generation is going to have a new story to tell. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. But this still yep. has to be the last movie. So it's crazy. Uh, I think <laughs> yep. it's going to be the last Impossible movie. Impossible task. Yeah, because it well, yeah, but it's going to wrap up the stories of these characters, and that'll be enough. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it doesn't have to be it wrapping wraps up, up these the characters. galaxy. <laughs> yeah, forever. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so I think, yeah. Okay. Whew. We've been talking for a while. There's still so much to talk about, so we'll have to mm -hmm. like maybe spend a little less time on certain things. But um, mm -hmm. we really have not, Ryan, talked about Kylo Ren's the end of Kylo Ren's story here, um, mm -hmm. which is maybe the single biggest question hanging over the rise of Skywalker, isn't it? We've talked about a lot of questions, but we haven't really talked about that one, which is, I think, the biggest... To me, that's the biggest question mark. Uh, I, I say he's going to be redeemed or that mm -hmm. he will have some kind of redemption. Do you agree? Yeah, and I think we... 
I mean, we we have to talk about um, a TV spot here because okay. it's we have the to. Amazon one. The whatever I don't even know about when you took these. the elevator down. What? All right, sorry. Continue. I'm I'm sorry. Okay, I don't know. Um, you took an elevator down to this room in this like Sith temple, and then Palpatine was talking to him. And it had huge implications for his story. Yeah. Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah, I okay. yeah, I didn't know the specific brand association with it, but um, okay, yeah, but um, yeah, where you know Palpatine is like every voice you've heard in your head was mine, and he was very like it very much gave the implication that Palpatine had been manipulating Kylo Ren the whole time. Um, or at least, well, yeah, manipulating in mm-hmm. like his own Palpatine way. Um, and you know, that, that sounds about right. That, that tracks, uh, that's on brand for Palpatine. Um, however, it does, you know, make, uh, the redemption story a, a bit more challenging, because it's like, is the audience, am I more willing to accept a, like, more positive redemption if I know that it's like, oh, you know, Kylo's just this, like, poor kid who has been manipulated since, uh, since, since birth, basically, mm-hmm. Um, whether by Palpatine or by Snoke or, I mean, obviously Palpatine, but also by Snoke. Um, and does that make it like a happier ending for Kylo? Does that make that easier to swallow? Um, and in, in some ways it almost feels like the, that's something that like the, filmmakers could try to do they could try to make it more palatable to audiences by saying like you know it's not really his fault like he was radicalized by you know by these people and like he couldn't really control himself and stuff um i don't know how i feel about that um i don't i definitely don't love that as a storytelling choice i think that takes you know characters are defined by their actions and like those actions need to come from a place of like agency to like really you know mean something Mm -hmm. and so i don't love it from a storytelling perspective um and i don't know i hope that they they still take a challenging and complicated route with it um that where it's not just uh like you know one way or another kind yeah. of thing yeah i agree um i like it from the perspective or the angle of palpatine is this grand manipulator and orchestrator and mm-hmm. guess what you know he's been Palpatine going to manipulate, you know what I mean? And that's what he's yeah. been doing all this time. I mm-hmm. like that angle of it. If For it's sure. used, if it's used to make Kylo, Kylo's story too, if it simplifies Kylo's story too much, then I don't like it because the great thing about Kylo is how complex he has been. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Part of his complexity is that there has been a pull to the light or whatever all along and that he's conflicted about the things that he's doing. But time and time again even though that pull to the light is there which makes him more complicated more interesting he chooses he doubles down on evil he doubles down on the dark side Mm -hmm. over and over and over you know what i mean um and so you know like for instance in the throne room right like when ray's like the fleet there's still time to 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 save the fleet whatever and kylo's like let it all die let all those people die i'm gonna be the supreme leader i'm gonna you know continue to murder and pillage but you know you could be my girlfriend while i do it like in in that moment like it's not palpatine manipulating him to make that choice you know when he's in the uh the ship on crate and he says aim every single gun we have on luke skywalker Mm -hmm. and i am filled with rage and i want to murder my uncle right now 
Like, mm-hmm. it's not Palpatine making him do that. It's not even Luke Skywalker who had the lightsaber held above his head, you know, back on the je- at the Jedi Temple. It's not, nobody else is making him do those things. So this kind of stuff contributes to the complexity of how Kylo got to where he is and makes it, I think, more interesting. It can, but it doesn't change the fact that, like, this is who he has become. Even if it's because he was manipulated by somebody else or whatever, like, it, it, who he is now is the person who doubles down on evil and hate every time, I think. So, you know, that I still, all that being said, I still think that this movie is going to see him redeemed in some way. But what I would like is a redemption that is ambiguous and complicated and murky, kind of like the character always has been, you know? Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. And Adam has been, I put this in the notes, but Adam has been making like these little comments and I've heard him say it a couple different times, a couple different ways, but it's sort of like, I've heard him say multiple times, it's not something the character says. And, you know, to be clear, he's never said that he's talking about the character's conclusion or whatever, but like, mm-hmm. he's just a few times he said like, I, you know, basically it, sh- it, it, he is complicated and he's interesting. And there are, there are things that you realize about him or, or kind of truths about this character, but they're not things that he says necessarily. And that excites me because I'm excited about the idea that we could walk away from this movie thinking, you know, Kylo Ren, in the end, he maybe he did change a little bit or maybe he did kind of, you know, make better decisions or maybe there's something he does that, you know, can be looked at as redemptive for him I would prefer that. I think he's going to die. And I would prefer that in, in, in his, you know, the, the final kind of moments or, or scenes for the character, you, you start to feel like, okay, he did realize he was wrong, but I don't need him to look at Ray and say, Ray, I was wrong. I should have been a good guy this whole yeah. time. I don't need him to say like, oh, the dark side, I shouldn't have chosen that. You know, I don't, I don't need that stuff necessarily. I don't need him to, to have a, you know, I'm a Jedi like my father before me moment like Luke Skywalker has where he triumphs over evil and Mm -hmm. all that stuff. I think we could have something with Kylo in the end of this movie where, um, yeah, there's a little bit of redemption for him, but it's not explicitly stated and it's not super obvious and simple and simplistic. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, you were, you were taking the, the quote, like, it's not anything that's said. Mm -hmm. And I think like that can be read in two different ways. It can be read as like, it's not something that's said, like, literally by a character. Yeah. Or it's like, it's not something that's like stated by the film, whether in dialogue or um, visually. Yeah. Um, and it could be both of those things, right? It could be both. Yeah. Um, but I also go back to the comment um, in another interview where they were asking, like, oh, will Kylo Ren be redeemed? And then Adam Driver's response was along the lines of, what does he have to be redeemed for? That's so funny to me. That cracks me up. Like, <laughs> and, and so that, uh, I mean... Which Part to be fair, could... when when he said that, he wasn't like, I don't think he's done any things that are bad. But what he was saying is that if from the perspective of Kylo Ren, Kylo Ren doesn't believe he needs to be exactly. redeemed because he believes he made the right choices. So and that's where it does kind of come down to that, like that it could come down to that Palpatine angle where um, you know, Palpatine you say like, you know, he he wasn't being manipulated in the throne room or on crate. But if the ideas that Palpatine put in Kylo Ren's head and had been, like, cultivating in his headspace were, like, you know, the Jedi and the Sith, like, it's all the same, you know, the the Empire, the First Order, the New Republic, the... Um, the old Republic, like it's all, it's all the same and it's all broken and flawed. And, um, you know, if he's putting that idea in his head, then yeah, like he would say in the throne room, like it's so much bigger than this. It's so much bigger than this fleet. Like this whole system needs to be 
you know, taken down, like, and you're the only one who can do it with me. Like, we we can be the ones who do this. And then in the same thing, like, on Crate, if it wasn't, like, it's not exactly Palpatine being, like, point all those guns, ha, 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 ha. Like, it's more like if, um, if Palpatine had just, like, stoked this fire within Kylo around, like, your uncle betrayed you. Mm -hmm. Like, he... He hates you. Your family hates you. Like they, you know, they they gave you t- away to this dude who hates you and like wanted to kill you just for who you are and you know because you're special and like if that's what you know the ideas that Palpatine had put in his head, then like yeah, like his decision makes sense. Like all of his decisions make sense when you believe these things. And so I think that kind of, and like, obviously we can, mm. we can judge it as like, oh God, those are, those are horrible choices. Like, that's awful. Like what, like you're, you're being awful. But if that's, and I think that's kind of where it comes back to what Adam Driver was saying. Like, he doesn't feel like he's done anything wrong. Yeah. Like everything feels so rationalized in his head, which is like the same thing with, you know, many uh, people who I don't want to say like evil people in our real world, but like people who do horrible things, like they often like have not only rationalization, but they also have like a segment of the population that supports them. Yeah. Okay. So I love uh, yeah, what you're saying is so interesting and I, and I totally agree with you. Um, But the conclusion it brings me to is that like Star Wars is about good triumphing over evil. And Star Wars is so much about like the fact that everybody is challenged by the dark side. Right. Um, But um, the best of us or most of us or however you want to think of it can overcome that challenge um, and and not, you know, be kind of uh, tempted to be the worst versions of ourselves. You know, we can be better Mm -hmm. than that. Like that's the message of the movies, um, and uh, or one of the messages. And, a and message, like yeah. You see, yeah, well, like Luke overcomes that pull to the dark side, you know, and 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 Leia does in different ways, and um, you know, Ray has so far, and I think obviously she will in this movie, right? And so um, you have these characters that that overcome that temptation and that manipulation and the lies of the dark side, whatever, right? Okay, so uh, mm-hmm. you have Luke Skywalker in the return of the jedi and you have anakin okay and and the end of return of the jedi like i've been thinking about this for the last i don't know 20 minutes or whatever we've been talking about this like i love the end of return of the jedi but if you if i think if i try to think about those movies isolated from the prequels it so is luke's victory and darth vader and anakin is such a anakin anyways is such a sort of non-character in those movies that it's like oh well this old man who's been evil all this time dies with a smile on his face and gets to say you were right to his kids and like i i made the wrong choice and man i shouldn't have done that but i'll just die in a peaceful way now like that's a nice message or whatever you know but it's really luke's victory it really is i mean it's luke's victory without the prequels then i think what's great about the prequels one of the reasons i love the prequels is you have those movies and all of a sudden when you get to episode six and in anakin is redeemed or whatever darth vader's redeemed what i don't know um you look at that and you go, oh, okay, I saw this guy's journey. I saw the way he was manipulated. I saw the way he was mm. lied to. But it also makes the end of Return of the Jedi a little tougher to swallow for me, really, because it's like, mm-hmm. yes, he was manipulated by Palpatine. Yes, he was lied to by Palpatine. I think Palpatine killed his mother. I think Palpatine killed his wife. I think that Palpatine totally manipulated Anakin into becoming Darth Vader. But I still don't say then at the end of like personally for me like the ending of that movie the end of the return of the jedi i love it but like i don't think oh that's okay because palpatine lied to him and his son like snapped him out of it you know he was hypnotized by the dark side but his son snapped him out of it so now Mm -hmm. it's okay that he did all those things like i don't feel that way and there's no way he could live on after that movie and have that ending be satisfying you know um and i guess the point i'm trying to make here is that like anakin failed to resist the temptation of the dark side in large part because he was manipulated by Palpatine, but it's still his failure. 
You watch the prequels, mm-hmm. and it is his failure. You see the flaws in Anakin's character in Attack of the Clones and in Revenge of the Sith, and you know that Palpatine is stoking those things. You know that Palpatine's mm-hmm. manipulating things, those things, but it's his failure. And I just can't see myself feeling like, no matter how much Palpatine's been in his head and lying to him, that this is not Ben Solo or Kylo Ren's failure. And and so I'm okay with I'm actually... I think I'm pretty okay with Palpatine them really leaning into like Palpatine manipulated the hell out of Ben Solo and lied to him and all that stuff because at the end of the day to me he still failed he still became the villain he still couldn't Mm -hmm. overcome the dark side the way Rey can the way Luke can the way other characters can and so it could be great if the conclusion of his story provides some level of understanding and redemption but I don't think it should be like a full on okay, well, now you know, you live on in in harmony in the light side because you realize the errors of your way. Like that's too simple of a message, I think. Yes. And I think um kind of going back to Palpatine and his um, you know, like why does he why did he choose Anakin? Why did he potentially choose Ben Solo and I think um you know I think there's he chooses people where there's systems in place that they are easy targets um for manipulation again going you know going back to uh our our real world think about like the people who get radicalized on the internet Mm -hmm. into like you know whether it's like a white supremacist group or an islamic terrorist group or whatever um think about like where do army recruiters go like think about like who are the people that are targeted by um you know these these institutions and you you're always like wow how could someone do that well you know there's there's reasons um and i think the people that um palpatine chose like he i mean we don't know his reasons behind choosing anakin but uh, to to some degrees but i think it's very easy to see why he would choose someone like Ben Solo, yeah. you know, coming from, and I don't want to, I don't want, I mean, essentially a broken home, um, by two, uh, parents who were, who are very invested in their work, mm-hmm. um, who were maybe not completely compatible, um, and also having the issue of like, mighty skywalker blood yeah the pressure of that yeah yeah the pressure of a legacy but also just like the spiritual energy Mm. that he possesses Mm -hmm. like yeah he's a perfect candidate for that and you know you you say like well luke luke was able to resist the dark side luke was ray's able to resist the dark side but to be fair none of them have had to resist Palpatine for their entire lives in the way that Anakin and potentially Ben Solo have. So, I guess if Anakin was created by Palpatine, which is an if, but if he was created (laughs) by Palpatine with the single purpose of like, you know, being this evil chosen one or whatever, uh, I mean, I I I shouldn't say, like, his entire lifetime, but, like, from the point that, uh, you know. I mean, we don't know. We don't know. Like, there's still... It's crazy that there's still so much mystery around episode one, um, which is fascinating. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, obviously, like, Luke has the moment in the throne room where, like, Palpatine's like, hey, you know, join, whatever. Um but like it wasn't like Palpatine had been like pulling strings in Luke's life forever. Yeah. Um which he seems to, you know, he did from a certain point, at least through at the very least through like Anakin Skywalker's like teenage years. Um and 
which is also like another funny um star wars real world thing like the most like volatile years of um humans lives uh that that's when palpatine would swoop in to manipulate um because it's you know it seems like potentially he did the same thing in uh ben solo's teenage years yeah. as well yeah yeah i mean uh, yeah that that all like uh checks out and makes a lot of sense but I-, I keep returning to the idea that you know star wars is about these broad strokes and about these like kind of key lessons or whatever and i just don't know like if the details can change that you know well mm-hmm. he's been manipulated more than everybody else so then the lesson is different i mean to i might be over i guess i'm oversimplifying things potentially but to me it's like mm-hmm. you know um some characters can resist that and, and and overcome that and outsmart that and other characters fail to do so and i think you learn from the failures of those characters that that couldn't do it. So like Anakin or Darth Vader or whatever at the end of Return of the Jedi, it's like, you know, luckily for the galaxy and for Luke and for him, he realizes he was wrong. Mm-hmm. But that's, I think, where the satisfaction is. It's the fact that like, okay, you know what? I shouldn't have made this choice. But then if it becomes, I shouldn't have made this choice. And so now I just get to live free of the consequences of all the things I've yeah. done. It just doesn't work. You know, I just don't know how it works personally. And people mm-hmm. will, people will argue like, well, it's okay with Anakin. Well, not really. Actually, it's kind of doesn't really work. And <laughs> the only way it kind of works is because he dies right away. And so there's no chance for him to pay for his crimes because he just dies, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and maybe, I mean, maybe that's enough for Kylo too. I don't, I don't really want to see a Ben Solo force ghost at the end of this movie or something, but if he dies, but you see that, you know, in, he can't continue living free of the consequences of what he's done, but he can bring his soul to a place at the end of the movie where it's, you know, cleansed in some way, or he's able to kind of, you know, in, in the force, he's able to sort of not be contributing to the dark side. He's able to be part of like the, the, you know, the, the light side or something. Maybe that's enough. I I, I don't know. Uh, but, I just I, I, I can't get away from the fact that you know yeah. he he's chosen the wrong path regardless of mm-hmm. however complicated we want to make the the reasons or the path for him to get there I still to me it's personal it's, he made that choice you know I don't know yeah yeah and I think we're getting into like again it just keeps going back to real world stuff for me and I know like some people like hate this and like oh i just just supposed to be a fun time at the movies like what <laughs> let's talk about some good guys let's talk about the troops mm. uh kind of thing <laughs> december the 25th uh, yeah um okay. like yeah but then like it when you start talking about like these uh like the afterlife and stuff it's it totally brings me <laughs> to like again like is like is ronald reagan in heaven like does he get to like have like eternal bliss even though like he did all this like horrible stuff but he was like you know he believed in god and uh you know like do can people be evil on earth and then still spend like eternity whether it's in like the force or in the like christian concept of heaven or whatever I think, like, that's also, like, another interesting question. And I think it's something that always rang a little shallow to me in when we talk about, like, Anakin Skywalker Mm -hmm. um, and his redemption and then him being, like, a a nice blue ghost, like, next to uh, Ben Kenobi and Yoda, like... I don't think Anakin should get to hang out with Obi-Wan and Yoda. Like, I think (laughs) Anakin kind of sucked. Um, He, you know, he had his moments, but like overall, you know, you look at uh, his, uh, his, his whole life and, you know, he kind of sucked and, Yoda and Ben Kenobi were were really good. Well, you know what? So. You know what? I, I agree with you. I absolutely agree with you. But I would also say, I think this is one where I'm I'm gonna say like, these are kind of the established rules of Star Wars. And you know, if if 
Return of the Jedi was being written in 2019, I probably that's not the way the movie should end exactly. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I still love Luke throwing the lightsaber down and, and Vader picking up Palpatine and throwing him to his death or whatever, but it probably shouldn't mm-hmm. end with like a smiley faced Anakin Skywalker as a blue ghost or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but then also, I mean, that's to me even a better argument for why this movie um, needs to have a more complicated conclusion for this villainous mm-hmm. character than just like, yeah, well now he's, he's okay. He, he, he's, he was bad for a while, but now he's okay again. You know, I don't think it can be that. I know I'm the one who said maybe he'll be a blue force ghost. And, and that yeah. is, that yeah. is like, I don't know. I, it's not that I'm saying I want that, but you know, I could see at least that would be a little bit of a uh, olive branch to. There's a lot of people going into this movie that desperately want to see Ben. I mean, there's people. Uh, I shouldn't say that. Uh, there's there's just a lot of people that desperately want him to be redeemed. You know what I mean? There's there's people that there's people that view him more as Ben Solo than Kylo Ren. You know, mm-hmm. no matter what. And if he dies without like a f- or well if the movie i shouldn't say even if he dies if the movie ends without a full redemption for him it's going to be pretty tough for people to swallow um at least certain you know parts of the audience so mm-hmm. uh, i feel like maybe there's it, at least the blue force ghost thing would be a way of kylo having to live by the rules of you know society whatever the the established kind of rules of 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 what happens to <laughs> people who you know um choose to be evil but uh, there's still a little bit of a, a something for for those who who view him as a hero- heroic character somehow. I don't know. I also just think of like God, Kylo Ren would would hate Ben Solo would hate being in, in like Force Heaven. Like he would he would despise. As I understand the character, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. The way I understand him, <laughs> the, what, everything I've ever seen of him. You yeah, know? and I've never I, seen know, that I, goodness in him really. You know that purity. Yeah, and I mean, he would hate all those people. Uh, he'd, he'd hate Qui Gon, uh, and all these good people in Blue Force Ghost Heaven. Yeah. Um, I think. Oh God, I think I'm also like starting to lose. Um, Your ability my train to of thought here. Yeah. yeah, because it's it's so it's so big. Um, but I also like I do want to say like I I really appreciate it's it's so hard for me. I think I'm just like becoming such you know being like older and like just seeing cycles within storytelling and within like the real world. Um, I'm becoming cynical about a lot of things and. So it's it's really hard for me to um you know go go all in, all in on a happy ending mm-hmm. um for Kylo Ren cuz mm-hmm. like I you know I love his character but like I also really love the idea of there being consequences for bad people's actions mm-hmm. regardless of the rationale behind them mm-hmm. um but like I do I do really love and appreciate the perspective of um you know like the the Raylo community who um and I don't want to like put words in anyone's mouths or anything but are are hoping for like a more um a, a happier ending I yeah. guess I don't yeah. know any other way to put it I that's like super oversimplifying but like um and I know like most Raylos don't like want a you know consequence free ending or anything but like they have the hope in ben solo i think is like a core um tenant there and you know the strength of his connection to ray and like i i really do like appreciate that sort of like you know optimism and um love you know that like no one no one's past the point of redemption like you know anyone can turn it around um but like that's i mean that's just it's really hard for me to like sincerely believe that like just as a person yeah i agree with you i think that's uh there's something you said there where you're like you admire their their hope in that character or whatever Mm -hmm. um those people that uh or those who who are are hoping for a happier ending form, um, I agree with that. I, I think that's uh, well said because it does. I think it's a um, it's a positive impulse, you know, to want to see mm-hmm. a, a better ending for him. Um, I think that maybe some of those people are are better 
people than he deserves though as a character you know what i mean a fictional <laughs> character it's like you sure. know they have this hope and and this faith in him and and they want to see and again like without you know hopefully not coming across as like trying to speak for what other people want or whatever but uh i just yeah i don't know if he's deserving of of all the uh the the goodwill that that he's getting from from mm. them but maybe maybe i i would say the other thing i would add to that is that I think if I was going into Return of the Jedi in 1983, there's no way I would foresee Darth Vader, you know, being this hero- make taking this heroic action at the end of the movie. And I think like that movie would have forced me to reconsider lots of things and would force me to look at you know the whole story a lot differently. And mm-hmm. uh, you know, there's there's maybe a way that this movie plays out that I haven't really anticipated or figured out that. Uh, could cause me to look at all this stuff totally differently you know what i mean um mm-hmm. and so who knows yeah right now i just I, I think i think i wouldn't argue that ben ben zolo kylo ren is a fantastic character i think he's one of the most intriguing and interesting and well-written characters ever in star wars i think he's incredible mm-hmm. uh, i think i just differ with some people on terms of like how i want the character's conclusion to to come about um but again like they could they could you know throw a left left turn at me in this movie where I'm all of a sudden, you know, completely like nothing will make me happier than Kylo and Ray together at the end, you know, or whatever. But, but yeah. right now I just don't see that as being a good thing for Ray. And I just don't see that as being really totally lining up with, uh, the, the message and stuff that the movie's going to send. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I, we've, we, I mean, we could talk about this forever probably. Uh, mm-hmm. How about we do a little force lightning round on just a couple yeah. topics here? Because we've, I mean, yep. the big ideas, the ending, Ray and Kylo, Palpatine, the nature of the force. Like we've talked that stuff uh, close to death by this point um, <laughs> in mm-hmm. the episode. I mean, I'm enjoying it, but you know, it's we've kind of circled around it all. I think at this point, mm-hmm. but there's just some some smaller things we can talk about. You know, quickly. Okay, I'm gonna be. Let's quick. do it. Okay. I always joke with my students. I'm like, you guys know how I do this. Like, I'm just going to talk about it real quick. I'm not going to go on and on and on and on and on and on. And they just look mm. at me and laugh like you. That's not what you do. You talk about stuff for mm. too long. So, but I'm going to really try to yeah, um, yeah, yeah. hold myself back here. So Finn, what do you want to see for Finn? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, um, yeah, Apparently I have no more about preference. his backstory too, is what the, it was, what, okay. Like, people have been saying and I, I actually think that it's maybe more important f- to learn more about who he is and where he mm-hmm. comes from than than it is for Ray but I don't really know what that'll be um let me toss this out there force lightning round so we don't have to debate it really mm-hmm. um but I, I just started to get a vibe a couple weeks ago that like I think maybe one of the surprises in this movie is that Finn's going to turn out to be like force sensitive in a in a big way and I think that could be kind of cool, actually, because, you know, it was like we watched The Force Awakens and he used the lightsaber and he was in all the marketing with the lightsaber. And it's like, oh, man, maybe this guy's going to be like another Jedi or whatever. And um, mm-hmm. obviously that's not the way it went. Um, and I think what they have done with Finn has been really cool uh, in in the first two movies. But I, I could see like it being really fun and kind of satisfying if it came back around where it's like, you know, maybe there's more to Finn than we knew. And Finn's going to, you know, kind of go down that road in some way and it could even be something simple where like you know in the in the final moments of the movie or the final 10 minutes of the movie or something like something happens that it's like oh man finn did have the force in a more significant way than we realized all this time you know i don't think he's going to be running around with a lightsaber in the last half of the movie or anything but it could be a fun kind of out of nowhere thing if finn ended up doing some forcey stuff or something yeah it could it could be could also Um, be bad yeah, I think I think Finn is going to be like one of the characters that keep the keep the story grounded. Okay. I think like Finn, Rose, Poe, Zori Bliss, Janna, um, Claude. Yeah, uh, are you don't think Claude's going, going to Jedi school? Uh, maybe, maybe he'll be uh, Ray's first pupil. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think. I think those are the the characters that are going to, like you know, keep the story grounded, keep it about the galactic conflict, um, mm-hmm. be the, you know the, the eyes that, 
you know the the audience sees this uh spiritual conflict revolving kylo and ray and palpatine like they're going to be lenses for the audience i think um i i i could see um i think i want um you know his i i i I don't know i i really don't know i still like it's so old hat at this point but i love i still love the stormtrooper rebellion theory um him like leading um maybe not an entire army of stormtroopers but like even if it's just one trooper that he like converts like in like i think that would be something powerful Mm -hmm. to be like you you don't have to be this yeah um i think i think that's what i would probably want most from his character thinking about where he's been and um you know where he's going i think that could be cool um I think I'd probably prefer it on a smaller scale too, um, to a larger one. I think a large scale stormtrooper rebellion might be just a little too, yeah, predictable or too just kind of clean and simple. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, the bad mm-hmm. guys turn good. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't know about that. Uh, as is a theme of this conversation. You know what I mean? It's a, yep. I don't want to see that in a simple way. Um, but it, I think if it could happen to like one yeah. more, yeah, then like that wouldn't take away anything from finn's turn it would actually be like yeah finn is finn did this and then he was the catalyst for doing it again and like it can be done and then leave it open to audience interpretation yeah no i agree i agree yeah uh poe dameron i you know it's like i feel like his arc was he's gonna lead it yeah. yeah, I think his arc is going to lead the military part of it. Yep. Yes, and and we saw like the growth in the character in Last Jedi, and I think we just see him in this movie kind of settle into that role and be like that heroic leader type and funny yep. and fun and you know all that stuff. But I don't think he necessarily handsome. needs to like go through a lot of change. Oh, definitely handsome. Yes. Yeah, um, he'll be bringing so the handsomeness. We'll see. Um, I mean, kind of sure. true for Finn too, because like Finn, like Finn, kind of became uh, the person that you know. Um, like I, I feel like he's kind of settled into the best version of himself at the end of Last Jedi. I feel like kind of mm-hmm. that's true of Poe. Um, that's true of Rose. You know, so I, I don't know that their stories need to be. I don't know. I mean, I, I want them to have depth, obviously, but I think it can be just um, more in in seeing them, you know, kind of be the best versions of themselves instead of them having to kind of like get to that point in this movie. I agree. I totally agree. I think um, Poe is the leader that he was destined to be, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and if you follow the ancillary materials, like he is every, every bit as much of his uh, parents' son. Um, And that's, I think, really satisfying. Mm -hmm. Um, If you read Shattered Empire, which you should. Um, And then I think, yeah, Poe has also like or I mean Finn has also like he's seen the the dangers of running away he's seen the dangers of indifference he's seen the dangers of both sides ism uh and he he knows like there oh there is a there is a right side and like I'm not going to be a nihilist I'm not going to run away from this conflict like I am going to do to quote frozen to uh the next right thing Mm. and uh and yeah so i i completely agree and i also think rose was already pretty much the best version of herself coming into it um she is like she is a just genuinely good person who has been hurt and has had things taken from her but she's uh if anything in last jedi she gained confidence Right. And that was the the piece that was missing, um, but well, she's a good example. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say. I think like they those characters were set up. I don't want to say like oh their their character arcs are over, but like their character arcs were solidified in the Last Jedi, and they are ready to enter the Rise of Skywalker as fully formed characters. Um, that 
are going to play a major role in the story. And I think that's fantastic. Yeah. And I think Rose is a good example of like, she didn't have to become like this good and pure or, you know, pure, maybe pure has a troubling context, but like she didn't have to mm-hmm. become like, like what, as we were talking about, like with Ray, like, oh, well, it's, you know, I don't want to simplify her as like, she's pure. You know what I mean? But um, mm-hmm. it, she was great already. Rose is already great. And um, she was able to, you know, do something great at the end of the movie, but she didn't, it's not like, oh, let's see, I see how she changed and became great and she did this thing. It's just like, well, she was awesome, so it made sense for her to make this awesome choice to, like, save Finn. Um, and, like, I think we'll see a lot of that kind of stuff with Poe and Finn and, you know, these other characters in The Rise mm-hmm. of Skywalker, where it's like, it doesn't, yeah. you know, it, the choices that Finn and Poe make at the end of The Last Jedi are a result of, like, the journey they were on in that movie where they grew up to be mm-hmm. those better versions. But now that they are them, I think they can you know, kind of be used in a way more like how Rose was. Like, Rose was used to support um, Finn when he needed support to make better choices, and, you know, she was there to stop him from doing the thing he shouldn't be doing, and I think Poe and Finn now can be kind of, you know, make good choices like that and, and do good things, and um, they don't necessarily have to be tested quite as much because I think they've passed their tests in uh, the mm-hmm. last Yeah, uh, absolutely. I don't even really want to speculate about Leia. I just hope it's done really well, and I think it will be, but, like, yep. I don't, I don't, I don't want to... I don't know. Yeah. And really same with Luke because it's yeah. like, I don't know if he's going to be in the movie. I think it's going to be good. I hope it's going to be good. I think it, he won't get that much time, but hopefully it'll be uh, something that supports Ray's story and maybe Kylo's story. And uh, it could be, you know, good stuff. So I don't, I don't necessarily, I just, I just want them to, to use the character in a way that feels satisfying and fulfilling and um, emotional. And I think they will. So, you know, that's really all I care about as far as the Luke stuff goes. Mm-hmm. Um, Palpatine. I think he should be a ghost personally. I'm, I'm starting to lean more and more towards he's not going to be in the movie in a physical form. Um, I mean, I think he'll they'll have to battle him in some way, I guess. But I don't know if it'll be physically battle him. Maybe it will. But like, I don't know. JJ's been talking about how like they, the and Chris Terrio too, the ending of Return of the Jedi, like, they're very cognizant of not undoing what was done in that movie, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. And so like, well, Palpatine actually didn't die. So, you know, whatever. I I don't think it'll be that. I think it'll be, I guess he could maybe return to a physical form in some way, but I think like at least initially he's just going to be like a evil presence, a Sith haunting, something like that, Mm -hmm. Um, which I'm cool with. Uh, and uh, I think he's got to be finally put down in a really final way, and I don't know what that looks like, but I don't know what him coming back looks like, so it's hard to predict. Yeah, yeah, I think um, the the story is there. Um, well, like most of the pieces are there in again the ancillary materials. We know about his contingency plan. We know about Sith artifacts and hauntings and all that, and uh which might be a good good thing to brush up on if you uh, haven't uh, consumed some of that extra material going into uh, Rise of Skywalker. Um, but yeah, I think we're just waiting for the last piece, which is like what was, you know, what was the part of the plan to keep him going? Um, you know, because, you know, he... Palpatine plans for everything, and he planned for everything uh, post Return of the Jedi. Um, yeah, like what? What is the piece? Like, how does he manifest um, in in this film? Um, and I'm pretty much cool with just about anything they do with it because I think it's he's more of like an idea than like a dude at this point. Um, I don't care if he has a body or doesn't have a body. I think his impact would be the same. Um, regardless, especially when we look at his role in like, um, you know, potentially manipulating Ben solo for a very long time. Like he doesn't have to be like a dude physically whispering into someone's ear. And I don't think I need to see, uh, ray fight a super old dude yeah uh shooting lightning everywhere uh in this movie yeah i agree but the 
the one thing though is that I do want it to end with like a climactic Jedi versus Sith style, like not throne room necessarily, but like I want to, I want the movie. I love the politics. I love the space battles. I love the ground battles. I love like all that stuff as far as Star Wars goes. But you know, my favorite thing is the Jedi. My favorite thing are are lightsabers and the Force and the philosophy of the Jedi mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And I want the ending of the movie to be built around that kind of thing. Um, and I just like, I don't think it ends with Rey killing Kylo Ren. And I think it's one of the reasons it's so important to bring Palpatine back. But like, I do want there to be like a, you know, like the like Revenge of the Sith, Return of the Jedi style, like epic, meaningful battle at the end between good and evil and i don't know what it looks like necessarily if like if they're not fighting palpatine like what are they fighting you know yeah and i think i mean potentially the answer there is like a kylo ren fully possessed by palpatine fully Mm. yeah but it wouldn't feel good for ray to see that's the thing like i don't Mm -hmm. want kylo to be like redeemed to the point where like he's a good guy now but at the same time, like, I, I don't think it would feel too good for Ray to just, like, strike down Kylo Ren, possessed by Palpatine or not. You know what I mean? Yeah. I guess it, I think to, I guess it would could, be complicated. They could have and... that. I, I actually like, like where your head's at because they could have that battle. Mm-hmm. And, and she could be battling him and they could be having this epic conversation. And, you know, like, mm-hmm. the emotions are being expressed through this, like, beautifully choreographed lightsaber battle and all that mm-hmm. stuff. But then it doesn't have to end with like one person striking the other one down with a lightsaber. Like something else can, Force Ghost can come into the mix, or you know she can break, you know Kylo free of the whatever possession of Palpatine in some way. Like mm-hmm. something can happen that's not just like well one wins the fight and the other loses. So yeah, it, you're right. That that does that could be really good. Yeah, and that would still give like the opportunity for. Um, you know, like a really just good lightsaber fight scene too. Because like, you know, if you have Ray just fighting like an old dude. Yeah, no, that's like not good, that's no. yeah. Um And I absolutely so, don't want to see like Force Ghost Anakin fighting Force Ghost Palpatine or something instead of because I want like again, it needs to be Ray's victory. It needs to be Ray's yeah. story. It can't mm-hmm. be superseded in the end by the legacy characters. You know, that's mm-hmm. no good. Yeah. I mean, I do want to see Force Ghost Anakin fighting Force Ghost Palpatine. I mean, it would be cool. As I said it, I was like, oh, yes, <laughs> yeah, let's do this. Like, um, but that can't be the main focus. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so last thing. We should we should probably close up here. Uh, last absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Anakin. And I think it's a good thing to end on, too, for, yeah. for this conversation of this nine, uh-huh. this, this final movie in this nine film series. Um, I, I, can't, I can't imagine Anakin's not in this movie in some regard. Can you? I think he's got to be. I can imagine it. I can't <laughs> imagine him like being in it. Like I, I can't imagine how I would feel if Hayden Christensen pops up on that screen. You don't like, like that? No, I love it. Oh, but okay. I can't <laughs> imagine how good it would feel. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, and and I also like I don't I don't know how how you do that. Um, I don't and how you do that well, because again, you like something we've been talking about a lot, um, with star Wars is you can't just have something pop up and say, Hey, here's this thing that you remember. And that alone being satisfying, Mm-mm. Mm-mm. like you have to earn it when you use, like when you use nostalgia and when you use history, you have to earn it. And I think that's why stuff like it, Yoda popping up in Return of the... Or in uh, The Last Jedi. Like, Ryan earned that. Because that is, like, super poignant. It it moves the story. It feels good to see that Yoda puppet again. But it's not just like, hey, it's Yoda. Dude, cool. Yeah, absolutely. It can't be an Easter egg. It can't be there yeah. superfluously. It has to be. Yep. It has to be meaningful. But like Anakin Skywalker, like it, I mean, I, I'm not saying that it won't be hard to do it and have it be perfect and come off really well. But like, I don't mm-hmm. think it's hard to. 
as far as all the nuts to crack, as far as like breaking this script <laughs> and figuring out this story, making Anakin a meaningful part of the conclusion, I don't think is a difficult like challenge for them. The I meaning also is almost think it's inherent. an easy, you know what I mean? like it's, yeah, it's, it is, it's, but it's one of those things that it's like so easy and so obvious that it's also easy to get wrong and yeah. to be like overconfident. No, you're right. You're right. I think that I think they'll do it with restraint. I think they'll do it tastefully. I, I hope so. Anyway, um, I do have faith in them and well in JJ, at least yeah. in that regard. I mean, I don't have any reason not to have faith in Chris Terrio, but I'm just not super familiar with him. But, you know, mm-hmm. he seems like he's cool. Uh, but yeah, I have faith in JJ that it'll be done well. I have faith in Kathleen Kennedy that it'll be done well. I mean, mm-hmm. let's not to rub salt in any wounds or anything, but like somebody tried to do this story and couldn't do it well enough. And she was like, okay, TTYL, you know what I mean? Like it's mm-hmm. gotta be done right. Yeah. And I, I think they'll do it right. I think it's going to be good, but I think it's going to be so, there's gonna be a lot of weight and emotion to it. I think when, when we see Anakin in this movie and it, and I'm not going to like rage or come out of the movie being like, I can't believe they didn't give me Anakin if he's not there. But I, I dude, I think he's, he's in it in some way he's gotta be. And, and, and the thing is, it's going to be great from a story perspective, but I truly love the idea that Hayden Christensen was in Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith, and I think he did a great job. Um, mm-hmm. I think that the, the faults with the performance probably are not primarily don't primarily lay with him, and I don't nope. even think that there are that many faults in the performance. I think the performance is really good, personally. I think it's easy mm-hmm. to look at a Star Wars movie, especially one of them has pretty bad dialogue and be like, oh, the guy sucked. And I think he was awesome. And I think that, Mm -hmm. but I think it took a toll on him. I mean, you could look at his career and you just know that it did. You know what I mean? And I think that, uh, you know, not that it was as tough for him as it was for say Jake Lloyd or, or Ahmed Best or something like that, but I think it was pretty tough on him. Um, And I think that, you know, seeing him at, at Star Wars Celebration in, in, in the past and just, I think he's starting to feel the love and being embraced by the Star Wars community and people are starting to, you know, like the tide is turning a little bit on the prequels as far as people just trashing them all the time and all that stuff. And anyway, I think he's, things are in a better place as far as Hayden Christensen and Star Wars go uh, for a lot of reasons, but I love him having the chance to participate in the last movie. Like, if this all goes well and it's a big success and people are really satisfied with it and people look at the sequel trilogy in a positive light and view it as like a, a strong conclusion to this saga and Hayden Christensen gets to be a little part of that. I love that, you know? Mm-hmm. And yeah. I've kind of been trashing the the whole Anakin redemption thing for a lot of this episode. And there's the potential that like in the same way that, you know, the ending of return of the Jedi is really recontextualized by the prequels existing. Like I feel like maybe there's a way that that whole Anakin just gets to be a good guy. Now thing could be improved a little bit by him being Mm -hmm. in here. Maybe they could add a little complexity to it through his appearance in this movie. If, if he's in it. So I think there's a lot of positives, a lot of upsides to Anakin being in the movie. Uh, it, it could be done badly, but I, I think they'll, they'll do it right. I think it'll be awesome. And I'm super excited for that. Uh, and just real quick, just imagining like Anakin talking to Luke is pretty crazy. Imagining Anakin talking to Kylo is pretty crazy. And then as I was typing up the notes, I was like, God, what if there's a scene with Anakin and Leia, you know, which I think is very small likelihood. And that would actually be hard to do well, uh, for like a lot of reasons. Like even if, Mm. even if Carrie Fisher was around to perform, you know, new dialogue or whatever, I still think it'd be hard to do, be really hard to do with you know, only being able to use existing footage of her, but there's just something tantalizing about that idea though, you know, cause Luke, yeah. Luke got his closure with his father, but Leia didn't get that, you know? So there's kind of something there that's, I don't know. could be cool. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't want to, I, I think that closure would be poignant and wonderful, but I think there's also something to be said for, like allowing loosens to exist yes, yes, and yes. not not putting a bow on every single sub story within Star Wars, which yes. is what I don't want this movie to do. Like yes. I don't want it to be the, you know, the infamous Return of the King epilogue where like everything or like Harry Potter book seven epilogue where like everything is just like tied tied up. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's something that, um, 
also like i don't want to frame things in a way where it's like oh well it's a disappointment if this doesn't happen or if this doesn't happen or if this doesn't happen or like oh that would be perfect why couldn't they have done that yeah um i think like allowing that allowing the filmmakers that grace and not expecting of it it because that also like doesn't always turn into like a good ending yeah. when every when you can see like they're checking off boxes yes so. yes 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 100 percent. i think like this conversation a lot of it has been would this be cool would this be cool like i'd love to see this um and so you end up with like this long list of all this stuff that like you want to see in the movie or whatever um but i i think ideally some of these things are going to be in it and some of them aren't because yeah, it's like if you just get a bunch of nerds sitting down saying like, well, what's all the things I want to see in a star Wars movie. And then they're like, okay, we'll squeeze all of them in there. Like it's, it's probably yeah. not going to work as you've, as you've pointed out, you know? So mm-hmm. um, no, totally. Like I, I had to, we have to put our faith in them to, to do it the right way and, and, and all that. And we can't get all these things, you know, I don't want, I don't, I don't even want like a scene with Anakin talking to Luke and a scene with Anakin talking to Kylo and a scene with Anakin talking to Leia and a scene with <laughs> Anakin fighting. I mean, it would be ridiculous, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's fun to think about the possibilities of any of those individual things. And hopefully we get a nice, you know, kind of combination of, of things we wanted, things we didn't expect, but got anyway, you know, um, <laughs> all that stuff. Um, uh, so you're right. And, and, and going into it being like, this has to happen. Otherwise we riot, uh, is not what <laughs> I, it's not a good recipe for being happy with yeah. yourself and the movie when it's over. You know what I mean? I just have Which to say. Which is actually something we do have in the show notes for one topic. Um, but <laughs> well, as a joke, uh, yes, yeah. and I know, but yeah. I, I, as I was saying that, it's not a good idea to go into the movie being like, "This has got to be in there, or we riot." Yeah. That being said, Anakin's not in the movie; I riot. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, and and for me, like, yeah, I'm I'm saying like these, you know, we want to give the filmmakers grace to tell the tell the story that they want to tell, but at the same time, um, my non negotiable is Qui Gon talking to Ray. Yes, yes, Ta- yes. Talking to yes. Ray about prophecies and chosen ones. Yes, and all that. Oof, I like it. Better, better have that movie, or it's, or I'm giving it a zero on Rotten. He's Tomatoes. he's going to tell her that her focus determines her reality, but not in an Easter eggy. Remember when I said that exact line? He's gonna, mm-hmm. it's going to be said in different words, but it's going to be like the same yeah. idea. Damn, that's going to be good. Yeah, and Why also. Gun-Gen? There's always a bigger fish. <laughs> That's we'll, I could go for that we'll Easter egg, you know. Yeah, there's always a yeah. yeah. Oh man, great memes on yeah. that too. Always a bigger fish, but uh, yeah. all right, we should we should uh, we should wrap this up. But I've I've had a lot of fun with this conversation, yeah. man. This has been like yeah. a really good way to spend a Sunday morning right before the Rise of Skywalker comes out. You know, mm-hmm. it's been fun to like dig real, just really dig into all these different ideas because. I mean, I'm sure you're the same way I am. I'm sure a lot of our listeners are. I'm just like right now my mind is racing with the Rise of Skywalker like all the time. But mm. it's nice to get like a – it's nice to be able to like kind of focus those through a conversation like this and really kind of dig – like think – because I can't think about stuff like in a super clear way when I'm just like every day being like, how many more days until the Rise of Skywalker, you know? Mm-hmm. But like through this uh, conversation, it's been good to kind of clarify some of my thoughts on stuff. So anyway. All right, cool. Uh, well, nobody's probably still listening two and a half hours in, but if you are, mm-hmm. thank you. You know what? This is the season when people might, though. People might just be willing to listen to, you know, this much Star Wars conversation four days before the Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> probably like the only time people would listen to us ramble for this long, but maybe. Maybe. I don't I don't think I would. I would. I would listen to me talk. I would listen to me talk for this long. I love me. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of over like I I posted on Twitter last night that I'm kind of over Palpatine's laugh. Uh-huh. Uh I'm also kind of over me having opinions about Star Wars. Oh, okay. Right well, that's now. bad news for the podcast, but all uh-huh. right. Okay. Um wow, you just put we'll... the podcast live on air. Damn. <laughs> Like I'm, I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm over these thoughts in my head and like articulating them uh-huh. and hearing myself mm-hmm. and seeing my tweets and all seeing my texts. Like I'm just, I'm kind of over m- my my thoughts on Star Wars okay. right now. So I'm, I'm ready to t- take a little break. Okay. 
Well, my egomania uh, does not have the same limitations yours does, so I'm still pretty into hearing me talk about Star Wars. So, um, I'm I'm eager to take a three day break okay. <laughs> until Thursday night, right. and we uh, well, hopefully we the rise of Skywalker revitalizes uh, that. We'll see. Um, I'm going Thursday night. I don't have uh, tickets for more showings, but I think I'll see it probably hopefully two more times that weekend. Um, I know you have multiple showings already, right? You have tickets for multiple. multiple. Yeah. Thursday night, Saturday. We have, we have Friday night tickets too, but it's also my work holiday party. Ooh, gotcha. And I've, I've started feeling guilt about skipping my work holiday party gotcha, gotcha. to, uh, um, go see it. But then we have Sunday morning tickets as well. Okay. So cool. All right. Well, um, you know what? Right now, The Rise of Skywalker is not out, but next time you hear from us, it will be, and uh, we're excited to talk about that when I am, anyways. Excited to talk about that once it <laughs> once it once it drops. <laughs> so, um, until then, uh, you know our website is www.blockaderunnerpodcast.com. Um, you can email us blockaderunnerpodcast at gmail uh, We're on Twitter. Well, let's not even share the handles. We're not going to be on there. I'm, I'm not going to be on no. Twitter. I'm leaving. Yeah. I'm ducking out of yep. Twitter until Taking a break. the movie comes out. So forget about that. But mm-hmm. um, yep. yeah, anyways, uh, thanks for, for watching and or listening, uh, especially if you've been watching and listening for a while um, because, uh, you know, this feels like a pretty big, it's a big moment. Like we've been doing this in the sequel era. This is the last film in the sequel era. And um, it's been it's been a lot of fun to be part of this whole Star Wars thing for the last a uh, couple of years and um, we're going to be uh, ending one era and hopefully starting another good one so um, yeah fingers crossed it's going to be the, the best Star Wars movie ever can't wait and uh, we'll catch you next time